What's up, everybody? It is I, Sigma, and we are back with episode 18 of the BBET Gamescast. I'm joined by Superman Jeff 12. What's going on, baby? As well as Blue Bones. It's your boy. What's going on, fam? And as we do always, we're going to go ahead and start this episode with what we've been playing throughout the week. Uh, does anybody want to volunteer to go first? I'll go first. There go right ahead. So, uh, I hop back on a little bit of Monster Hunter. Mm -hmm. Um... I did the, uh, what's it called again? Um, nope, actually, yeah. I got the, the sword <laughs> from uh, Glavinos. I was able to upgrade my uh, Lavioso sword. Gla the Glavioso. Glavioso. I feel <laughs> like... Lava Sloth, whatever, it's, what is it called? I feel like oh, the, the lava one? Or... Yes, yes. <laughs> that does sound like a... <laughs> they just try to cast a spell. It's, it's Levioso. Oh, excuse me. Yes. Because Lavios, Lavios Soft is like yes. the lava version of the fish monster. Yes, the, la the Lava Sloth. You upgrade him, his sword, using the uh, parts from uh, Glavinos. Oh, yeah. so Glavinos doesn't yeah. have its own sword. Like no, he doesn't sword. have his own sword. So he, that's how you take his tree up a little bit further. So I did that, and then um, now I'm on a part with the uh, Brachiodos. What's the so highest do that. ranked weapon you have right now? Ten. 10 okay because I'm, I'm working towards a 10 star weapon right now i think I, I that's why that nines. one was easiest because it just took Lavinos parts i already had which was weird because it went from like a because that lavislaw sword was like a seven and using the Lavinos parts jumped it up to a 10 then i have my pookie pookie sword which is a nine which i gotta figure out what the next part of that is because it has the question marks right yeah i think for, most, for certain parts i i did hear um in a review that because <clears throat> There's about as many assignments as the base game, but there aren't as many monsters. Like there's a lot, mm -hmm. but there aren't as many. Yeah. Um, the level, the level up for the new tiers of weapon take a little bit longer since you're yeah. you're going from like eight to twelve at the highest versus you know one to eight in the base yeah, game. Yeah, true. So it's gonna take a bit to unlock all the pieces of whatever those monsters are. So just and I need be ready for that. That did that, that. That actually makes sense because I think they spaced it out a little bit more mm -hmm. because some of the monster parts still haven't come across yet, which could just be the new variations to the to the existing monsters. But yeah. I haven't come across it yet. Um, also, I've been working with the great sword because it does have that. You do the heavy swing and then you can do the shotgun shot with the uh, the, the uh, ammo? slinger ammo. Yeah, I haven't figured so out I how to do that with any weapon that I use so far next time we hop on i'll show you there's certain attacks that you can follow up straight into it the only weapon that you could do it with like just right out is with the sword and shield of course mm. it doesn't the, require a, a attack the and then follow i'm trying up to learn how to use all them cats man because i got Shit, man. one weapon and it's it's the most anime weapon they got too the insect glaive <laughs> it's yeah, so man. much fun it's so much fun <clears throat> and i, I want to get to learn something else yeah man and it's you know um I tried to use the horn the other day, and I was like, man, this is boring as heck. Like, <laughs> <laughs> run around nobody singing. want to just play music and watch their friends be badass. Like, I mean, you can hit they, people with the horn. Yeah, but it's very difficult, and like half the time when you just kind of get into the frenzy, like you're not thinking about the buffs that you're applying, and it's right. just, yeah, it's... It's, it's definitely I a technical weapon. I personally love the great sword. That's That's... Personally, my yeah. favorite weapon. I've seen you killing it with that. Yeah, I, like yeah, it I love that too, sword. That sword, deceptively. It's fun. a then it's a tie between the hammer. No, oh. it's the hammer. The hammer, and then next is the long sword and the uh, dual blades. Mm. The, the charge blade is good. I was able to use it, but it requires like you can't just come back to the game and just pick it up. Yeah, you gotta that, go in really and kind of relearn yeah. it. Yeah, but it's awesome when you use it because I have the Nergigante one and it hits like ridiculous and covers a lot of air even like flying creatures it'll hit them yeah it, even if they're still kind of flying um so i'm playing that played some gears of war i've been playing a lot of gears of war so i hop on every chance i can get a match i finished ranked right now i am silver ranked two. Oh, nice like i don't yes. understand how because i saw you streaming that right mm -hmm. and it didn't drop for you like no <laughs> i was mad <laughs> I am, gotta be the time of day. I am beloved <laughs> by the gears. When you have beloved it by the be, gears, it could be. It could be they've 
figured out those server issues. Is it maybe? though, or is it that updates? Good players just don't get kicked. You know what that, I mean? I mean, what you're I, saying doesn't make any sense, so I'm going to say it's not that. <laughs> <laughs> so that was fun. So my favorite thing is to kill people who are playing Sarah Connor. Because then I get to say... <laughs> You've been terminated. <laughs> <laughs> You've been terminated? No. I hate how she says that. Yeah, that's what she like, says. Yeah, yeah, it's like, no, I get to say it, it's Skynet. But oh, I don't say it so politely. It's Skynet, B. Um, but, uh, <laughs> so funny, killer. Are you playing just, as the Terminator? Cause I'm playing as the Terminator. Every time. Hey, every time. That, that, that actually is, that makes is, it funny. That is the best part. It's like, it's got that. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. But it's, you know, it's fun. And, um, I, it does feel very, very fluid in, in PvP. I don't really get any lag. Um, the, the, the interactions between the characters and the in, and the environment now actually works very well. Um, some stuff I actually learned, like some of the top, some higher like covers, you can slide down to the lower covers. I found that out mm. actually last week when I got kicked. Somebody. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm like, I'm a higher cover, from... and he's in a higher cover. I'm like, there's no oh, way he can get me. I remember that. Yes, I remember and I'm that. Like, I was what? watching that street. Yeah. I was like, what got the heck? yoked up. Yes. But um, um, I've gotten into my groove. And so, like, the last week, we were doing pretty well. Um, playing with randos is just always a chance. But I was putting in some work. I was putting in some work. Always had, like, a positive KD when I finished. And um, it was just fun to play. It reminds me of how much fun I had playing Gears 1 so much. I just got to get a group of people that are going to play it. Because we used to play Gears 1, like, every, was every day. Was that 1 day. or was that 2? Was it 1? That was 1. One we played, we used to play with a buddy Phoenix, and then it yeah, was Necrosis. Yeah, we used to play that like all the time. But um, yeah, we did play that's that all I've been. Oh, and I finally finished Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Oh, you like beat it, beat it three. Yeah, I was, and then, but there's still like stuff you can go back and do. But I was taking my time with it because it's one of the games I can play on the go. Yeah. So I always try to save something like that for a war when I'm actually on the go, as opposed to in the house. But I did finish it, and um. I got to go back and do some of the side stuff, but also coming out with DLC tomorrow. And I also added two free characters that weren't in the game, which made no sense why they weren't in the game to me, which was Cyclops and Colossus. Yeah, those should have been uh, top the of the list. Yes. Well, I don't, like I don't know so much about Colossus, but probably definitely Cyclops. Cyclops. Colossus, Colossus has been in, staple. like... Yeah, I mean, yeah, he, yeah. He, he's always, like, a side character in all the movies and stuff, though. Like, he, he doesn't have they don't ex- Yeah, but in the games, he's always on the roster. All right. In Marvel vs. Capcom, in all the Ultimate Alliances, like he's always been on the roster. He always has. They get the movies; they treat him like redheaded stepchild. They like, really they do. They don't use him at, <laughs> at all. It's like, nah, Petro, nah, forget you. You just <laughs> you make a little cameo in Deadpool, and that's it. No, it was, was a good cameo too. He was he was in a lot of Deadpool. And yeah, it was yeah, it was, it was, was more than a cameo. It was, but he wasn't like like uh he was you know like a. A side side character. He wasn't like somebody that was like you know. To me, like I mean, well, he, it wasn't really like a story. It was just like yeah, I, I get what you're. <laughs> no, I get what you're, yeah, I get what you're so, saying. So it's hard to even say like, like he was in it. Yeah. Part of the story. Yeah, yeah he was yeah. in it. In a and lot of like, it, but it, he was more really, like a prop. You know what I mean? Sort of. And he was used, <laughs> but, he was used uh, for a lot of comedic relief, but it wasn't dead. Exactly. Movie, so, but um, <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's all I've been playing. Cool, cool, cool. All right, cool. um, Blue, did you want to go next? You go ahead because mine's a little unique this week. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so I uh, honestly have not been able to play a ton of the stuff that I want to play, <clears throat> but I did get to spend a whole lot of time with Code Vein just dropped. Um, That's true. Yeah, we were talking uh, about it, it last night. Yeah, it was Bandai Namco's um, take on the Dark Souls series, because as you know, Bandai Namco, Bandai Namco <laughs> published Dark Band- Souls for Band- From Software, but you know, From Software is doing their own thing now. So Bandai Namco yeah. wanted something, I guess, still in that vein and literally came up with a game called code vein so okay the elevator pitch is anime dark souls you mix dark souls you mix a bunch of anime tropes together and you get this game which honestly i thought was really good it looks good i was watching umi chan stream it last night and Mm -hmm. then i watched your review before that and you and i talked a little bit last night too i'm i'm thinking about picking it up does it have a multiplayer aspect to it um yes but it's it's a little bit more friendly than the dark souls version but there's no, there's no PVP. Like you don't invade yeah. someone 
and you oh, don't right. fight against them or whatnot. You can just kind of call somebody in. It's a little cumbersome because you. you can do a password system to get the right person. Otherwise, it's just randos. But mm. yeah, you can call somebody in, and then you guys can you know fight through a limited area with one another. So it's not like the whole thing. So it's kind oh, of annoying. It's not the whole game. Yeah, it's kind of annoying to kind of keep having to call them in. So yeah. if you're looking for like a co-op experience, this probably isn't the wave. But okay. if you know if friends yeah, do have the that. game, you you know they can come in and help you with certain sections if you need it. I'm glad you said that. But um, because I was really looking forward to a co-op experience. Oh, on that. Yeah, yeah, like so. Yeah, it's, not, it's definitely not that. <laughs> Save me sixty this bucks. This is why. This is why you listen to reviews. This is why you watch streams. <laughs> this is why you listen to these podcasts so you can find out information like that. You know what I mean? And yeah. See if it's I mean, you could just get Dark Souls three. I mean, ain't nobody but Dark, want that. But game. Dark Souls three is the same thing. It's like it, the co op is limited. Like they yeah, but we we could evade thing. each other. That was the best. Some of the best. <laughs> stuff. Did, fight each other like, is fun uh, in we, the game. I think we did like maybe like fifty matches. We were having some fun with that. Yeah, that, that's, there, that's fun. You bow and then you go to work. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Code, Code Vein. Um, it it has a good story, which was surprising because a lot of games that kind of steep themselves in anime, honestly, most of them are like licensed games. Yeah. So the ones that are doing their own thing tend to be okay, like you know, like the personas and RPGs of that nature. They tend to be okay. But this, since it was kind of mixing so much of another thing, I was worried. But it starts off like really convoluted like they're giving you all sorts of information they're doing a lot of world building a lot of a lot of info dump but it all yeah. starts to make sense the further you go and like it's pretty lengthy it's like a 30 hour story wow yeah so it does take some time but like even halfway through like there are like interesting reveals and stuff like at first you're like okay so all these guys are cool but my character's kind of just here like it feels like there's no real reason for oh, it but then okay. you learn oh no you actually do play a part like you're significant so I really enjoyed it. Like I wanted to keep playing to like learn more. Like the the combat itself is okay. Like it's not. I wouldn't say it's it feels better than Dark Souls, but it does do a lot more. Like it's deeper. Um, right. They what they do. If you ever play like the Final Fantasy Tactics games, for example, right? You know how. Ooh, or maybe speak my language. Or maybe Final <laughs> Fantasy in general. Because I, I don't play the mainline Final Final Fantasies. But okay. you know how you're trying to build a character's class. You mm -hmm. give them. You know certain abilities from that class and then they can take those abilities into another class to become like a hybrid class or something yeah yeah that's exactly. what like that's what the match. combat system in this is they okay. call them they call them really blood cool. codes so like there's a set skill yeah. skill tree for like um a fighter for example or like a ranger who can use like uh mm -hmm. guns and stuff really just one gun it's like a bladed rifle yeah <laughs> and like a mage who just casts like a bunch of spells and whatnot right but if you master any of those things, like you just use it for a little bit and kill enemies with those attacks, you can change to a different class, but then you can bring Hold over skills the... from the other classes. So oh, like, yep. like, there are like so many man. blood codes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it actually looks really good. I watched the review, and um, it looked really good. Um, I was always interested in it, mm -hmm. but it's good to see that it is a little bit deeper than I actually initially thought it was. Yeah, there's, there's definitely some meat in there. Just not for 60 bucks. Me right I, now. Yeah, I understand what I you're saying. I, I wouldn't be surprised, that. honestly, if in a couple of months from now, Code Vein just showed up on Game Pass. Game Pass. Oh, I love Ooh. that. Because you... Because I need a 39 really? is like my magic number for that game. My thinking for this, though, is because you remember Code Vein was initially revealed on a Microsoft E3 stage. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah and all the yeah. marketing for it is oh. also, you know, Xbox okay. backed. Like, you know how, like, Sony will... Be the one oh, that yeah, they, like Call of in Duty like for like and Call a, of Duty, a year. Yeah, it'll show up yeah. as like all the marketing <laughs> for Code Vein has been tied to Xbox. So at some point after I guess they get their initial sales, I would not be surprised at all if it shows up in Game Pass because Microsoft was pushing that heavy, and I, they yeah. seem to have a relationship didn't, with didn't that. Did Namco Bandai do Jump Force as well? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. And that yep, also so showed that up on Game Pass. Yeah. Yep. And it's the same exact thing. So that actually follows the lineage because that first showed up on Microsoft's E3 stage. <clears throat> Bro, if Cobain comes to Game Pass, like you can't you can't argue that Game Pass ain't worth it. it I don't is. know who it's would. Now. <laughs> I would call you a crazy person. Right now. Like yeah, just like you figure for the price of like one of the games, it's definitely worth it. Yeah, yeah. you're definitely saving a whole lot of money if you like to play games. Yeah, even with gold, you're saving money. Like because it incorporates gold now, so it's like exactly. Mm -hmm. There's there's literally no reason not to get it if you have an Xbox. Like stop playing around. Go get Game yeah. Pass. Only, only reason I would say you probably shouldn't get it is if you have a PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't understand why you need to do that. I have a that. PlayStation. 
Matter of fact, Me you know too. what? I don't Honestly, if you have a PlayStation but also have a PC, you could still get it because they put the game yeah. on PC. So that's true. Honestly, it's the that's greatest. True. It's the greatest value in gaming right now today. That's mm-hmm. why I keep, I keep, you know, pushing Evangelizing. it. Yeah, like cause honestly, I'm, Microsoft doesn't pay me anything. Yeah. <laughs> Are you it's sure right. though? I mean, I but wish. I mean, but yeah, <laughs> essentially, yet. and that pretty much like to me put the finite on like uh, uh, services like GameFly. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it'll yeah. yeah. pretty much like because I keep getting emails like, "Hey, come back for a dollar, come like, back for what? a dollar." I'm like, uh, "We didn't end on good terms. I don't really <laughs> like you anymore. So let's just like go our separate ways." Just go ways. our separate ways. Yeah, yeah, that's oh my it. Gosh. Jeff um, has an ex girlfriend named Gamefly. Named Gamefly. <laughs> um, so I can't think of anything else that I actually touched this week. Uh, I'm playing something right now, but you'll probably hear about that by next show. Okay. Um, cool. cool. So that's pretty much it for me. Blue, you said you had something Okay, so new. as you guys know, I've been very busy this week um, with, you know, adulting and stuff like that. So uh, one of the things I did is I picked up a gig where I was a background actor on a set for a uh, an, a TV show, right? Really? What so that, Yeah, that was, uh, I can't talk about it. Okay. Yeah, I can't <laughs> talk about it. But um, I was an extra and I, I, I was playing a role as a homeless man, oh. right? Mm. So you asked what I was playing. I was playing a homeless man, and boom, boom, boom. <laughs> so it was it was just like a weird, it was a weird um, experience because the casting directors are running around and the production assistants, and they're like, okay, it, granted, there's like probably about thirty people uh, as extras there. Mm-hmm. Half of them are about sixty percent of them are dressed up as homeless people, and the rest are dressed up as uh, various other roles. Um. So one of the casting directors comes up to me as soon as I get there, and I I brought the clothes that they suggested, you know, and she's like, "You, yeah, perfect." And I was like, "Okay, <laughs> should I <laughs> should I take offense <laughs> that she just said I was it is like I didn't even change yet? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, a weird what? compliment. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's a very it's like thank you kind of compliment. <laughs> um, and the other dude I was talking to, uh, like you know start talking to people um they didn't really like his look and so i was like they decided really fast on me <laughs> so you, they're like yeah you're not homeless enough <laughs> you're not you don't seem deprived enough let's just forget you, you know look look, look, look at like this guy you know this is what you should be <laughs> shooting for take, <laughs> take this guy is homeless as can, can you help him can you help him out <laughs> help him. <laughs> so that was weird um but all that to say, while we were waiting, you know, mm-hmm. it's kind of the standby to standby deal. I've been playing another mobile game that my girl introduced me to. Mm-hmm. It's super fun, and I think you guys should definitely check it out. It's called Rise of Kingdoms, right? Now, I've seen ads for this crap from the get uh, on on um, Facebook okay. for a long time, and one of my biggest things. So I watched the intro because the, the, the layout looked pretty cool. Um, I watched the little ad, and the my first comment was, "Why are there no?" black civilizations in here right it's kind of like the game that you've seen me play civilization six yeah where it's a top down um it's not it, it's a real ta- real time strategy game uh-huh. right you have your little city and you build farms and you build little huts and blah, blah 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 you go through time ages you start at the caveman time and then move on anyway the coolest thing about this game is that while there's a lot of different civilizations to choose from, you get put on a map, right? And this map is actual real time. There's other people who are putting their cities in certain spots. And granted, there's a whole bunch of servers for sure. But if you want to link up with your people, like my girl and I have our towns pretty much right next to each other. (laughs) We have an alliance. And we have some other people in our alliance. So you have other towns that are working with us. Mm -hmm. Or we contribute together. We can build like a fort and actually own land in that like in that map Mm -hmm. and people try and attack your stuff and you have to defend it and you can pick up resources and there's barbarians around there's a lot of really cool things to do it's a lot to manage but it kind of does it on its own and the main incentive obviously you know they want you to buy um cosmetic stuff and boosts to uh, farm your stuff faster but they give you a whole bunch and it's really when I say time management, it's not 
you know, okay, I have an hour to do this today. It's more like you have this boost that'll reduce the cooldown by an hour. Do I want to use it now or do I want to use it for something later? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And they have a whole bunch of those, and it's it's I don't I don't really feel the paywall. There's some things I want to do that I could just do oh, 99 cents, but I'm like, I don't really need to do that. I'll just be patient, and that's that's really what it comes down to. But so you don't you don't feel it, hamstrung by those exactly. limitations. Yeah, okay. that's a, that's a good game then, because I hate the ones that kind of lock stuff. Even like Warframe would do that. Hey, you can build this. Uh, yeah. You'll have it in three days, or you could pay 4.99 or use some silver and get it right now. And Where you, you can tell the cats who have used all that stuff because they just started and they have at mad advanced you know right. uh, so, so you don't get that feel in this game um, I mean the, but the, the guys who are paying like does that make it harder to like fight against them or is it balanced in a way where I have I think it's more cosmetic than anything and okay. then yeah you can build your troops faster and get bigger armies but I haven't ran into somebody that was like oh he definitely paid for his stuff there's some people that definitely beat me. There's other people I beat like right off the bat. So I don't feel the paywall, and okay. this game's a lot of fun. That's good. It I sounds w- cool. Yeah, what I want to do is like get a whole bunch of our friends and say, "Look, join this server, be on this map. Let's go." <laughs> and then just you know become a, yeah, a dynasty. Take over from there. Yeah, <laughs> become the Seven Kingdoms. <laughs> okay, and then <laughs> yo, beat on that game will come into real life. It'll be a lot of fun. It was like, yo, hey, I saw you mining. Uh, outside my city, I thought I told you not to do that. <laughs> I, 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 didn't, I didn't want to catch you in my neck of the woods. No, you know what I'm saying? Like, look, hey, if you guys keep letting this dude do this, I'm leaving the alliance and starting my own. <laughs> like, I can really see some civil war going on. I think it'll be yeah. fun. I think it'll be a lot not, fun. That sounds fun. I'm, I'm just not a fan of real time strategy, Our but I'd be guess. willing to give it a shot. He never has been. It's just like. <laughs> What's the, what's the last real time? Oh no, my bad. You like uh, Halo oh, Wars, brother. right? <laughs> Halo Wars. There was uh, the played some Warcraft. I'll tell you about Halo. Some, Stop, uh, talk- <laughs> Stop talking. Halo about Wars Halo is Wars. not horrible. <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying it's it horrible. Is. I just I don't like real time strategy. Oh yeah, I, I know like that. that's just like a thing. And that like, horrible. What about um, um, Warhammer? Uh, what was it Dawn of? Uh... That's a good. That's a good. Yeah. Game. Yeah. yeah, I've never played a Warhammer. I wasn't. I was just telling you it was a good yeah. game. Not that I was asking whether it was a good game. Just called Dawn of War. Yes. Yeah, that was a really good one. Did you look on your um? Oh, were you gonna finish no, that I didn't. Sentence? I didn't look it up. I just remembered it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, you, you, you were looking you away. You were like. Yeah. No, I was thinking. No, I was thinking. <laughs> so, um, was that all you were able to play? Was the mobile? <clears throat> yeah. What, dropped, say, what, what was uh, it called again? Rise of Kingdoms. Rise of Kingdoms. Definitely. Um, check it oh, out. I have seen a lot of oh, ads on that. Oh, and it's crossplay. What I mean by that is Android, Android. on the same servers. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. was one of the biggest draws for my girl and I, too, because um, she has Android. I got an iPhone. And um, it, a lot of games that we try and play mobily together, they don't match up unless oh, it's like okay. a Facebook game. And Facebook games are generally terrible. So <laughs> <laughs> generally, there's one or two good ones. But, um, okay, I mean, yeah, is, I, does that do it for you? Or you? I had um, a couple of really good comp games in Overwatch this week. Uh, I've been working on my support. My Moira game is pretty solid. I did, I think it was like 25k in 16 minutes. Oh, that's, that's okay. That's not bad. 25k healing or 25k damage? Yeah, heal- <laughs> healing. Okay. That's, healing. Not bad. that's not bad at all. Yeah, so you can do uh, either or. <laughs> is that like your best game? Because I think that's pretty. That's it wasn't pretty, my like, best game. It's pretty like here. Okay, I'm gonna you put your hands down and <laughs> stick to play Overwatch. Again, <laughs> I I yeah uh, I fell off of Overwatch. I used to you enjoy did. it kind of ish, but I fell off. I don't think I played an Overwatch match in like you know, it's been like two months. That hurts my soul, bro. Really? But it's, it's okay. It's yeah, okay. It's been about that long. I feel it too. Like he's. Yeah, no, I haven't seen his name in game for a long time, but it's all right. You know what I'm saying? We got uh, Monster Hunter Iceborne. I just picked that up last night. Excited? What? For me. You know what Finally. I mean? So you guys will definitely be hearing me talk about it until. Yeah. I, I want to tell our listeners why you guys are lying to them about how good this game is. <laughs> Excuse me. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> fresh, fresh eyes on it. Um, I'm excited about it, and um. Because you guys have been hyping this up for a minute, and everyone that oh, yeah, we played I've been, it. Yeah. yeah. Been waiting on it I, for a hot minute. <laughs> it came, and it is the truth. That's how I feel. 
Okay. Let's see. We're gonna find out today. We'll find out a little bit a little bit later today. But that's me. That's what I've been playing. <laughs> let's talk about some other stuff. Uh let's <clears throat> so back kind of start stepping back into the mobile stuff. Uh last week yeah. we talked about Apple Arcade launching. Uh, we did. You guys check that out a little bit. Uh, I'm not an mm-hmm, Apple guy, mm-hmm. so I wasn't mm-hmm. kind of on that wave. Do you prefer oranges? Yes, <laughs> I do. <laughs> oh, that was a good one, Jeff. Yeah. See, oh, a, man. Not, that's, how, that's the mark of a dad right there. <laughs> that, that is. That's his dad powers are coming to fruition. <laughs> but, so Apple launched its arcade. Google, mm-hmm. literally the very next week, showed up yep. and said, hey, we got something called Google Play Pass which is just like Apple Arcade, a curated selection of mobile games that do not have any uh, microtransactions in them. They're trying to get more actual game experiences, but yep. for mobile devices, um, same price, four ninety nine a month, but they're currently offering, I think, a deal where you can get in for like one ninety nine. Okay. Yep. And in addition to the games, they're actually also offering apps in the package. So like you'll have just access to certain paid apps within your mm-hmm. Google Play Pass account. So sounds cool except uh this is already launched but i haven't seen what games they have on offer i mean i've seen a, cu- a couple like i think like star wars um knights of the old republic 2 is on there which is uh, the, old... the first one the first one the okay first. yeah so kodor is on there but yeah. it's kind of old it's not really a game built for mobile i don't know how that plays mobily so it actually plays decent they they released it on android a long time ago when i actually had an android um, and it, it plays pretty well. The first game wasn't super high tech anyway, so mm-hmm. yeah, it was um, original Xbox that game. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, that was one of the the titles that actually stood out for me when I was reading through this article. But there's another one that's amazing that I, I loved, uh, Stardew Valley. Oh, oh right, yeah, okay. that is on there, bro. That that alone is almost. If I had an Android, that's almost a selling point for me to to get this service, at least to play it for. A month or two, because Stardew Valley is relatively short. But yeah, it's I've a only I've game. only heard great things about that game. Like if you're yeah. into like farming simulators or Harvest Moon or stuff like that, Stardew Valley apparently is like one of the best versions of that kind. Of, like if you're like Animal Crossing and stuff, like Stardew Valley uh, kind of scratches that itch. I hear. No, no, <laughs> it's more of a platformer and puzzle game. Really? Oh, what am I thinking yeah. of? I'm not sure, but that's not the one. <laughs> Are you sure Stardew Valley? I'm pretty sure that's like the farming one. I'm pretty sure it's not. Let me double check. <laughs> and we got this Google time. Da, 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 da. But, yeah, yeah it is. I'm definitely thinking about something else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, yeah. I'm definitely thinking about something else. I'm going to tell y'all what I was thinking about a little bit later. Because there's another, <laughs> another game. But, <clears throat> but yeah, Star, Stardew good. Valley, it is kind of like a, a like a yeah. farm management thing. But apparently it's incredibly addictive. So like, don't write it off as, you know, a boring Thing. Okay. Like people really do get into it, but uh, yeah. I also I'm also looking at the list now. They threw Limbo in there, which is really old, but that game is also fantastic. Oh, I, I actually play Limbo. Yeah, Limbo, is especially fantastic. on a mobile device. Yeah. So, my my thing is awesome. This is this sounds good. I want to know because the stuff that's showing up in Apple Arcade is like new stuff, like new, yeah, so specifically stuff that they for made mobile just games. For, yeah, yeah. Which look interesting and cool, like. It's cool that you can play these older games that are good on, you know, your phone, but I, I kind of want them to up their library of actual, like, new and fresh. New content, mobile. yeah. It's Especially, okay to have some indie stuff, too. I wouldn't mind some indie games in there. Right. Because some indie games would actually port over to mobile, actually, very well. My whole problem with both the Android and Apple versions of this this subscription service is that there's so many games that mobile games especially, that I don't play for too much longer than a month, mm-hmm. right? Now, if, if I find a game, I'm playing it, I don't like it no more after a couple of weeks, I don't want to continue to pay for that game, especially if I'm not finding anything else. Now, if I, I think it kind of has to go down to your lifestyle, too, because if you're constantly on public transportation, this might be a much better deal for right. you <clears throat> than if you drive. You know, so... It, for me, I don't see a mobile gaming subscription service. That, I don't think that's going to happen for me. But I do appreciate that the game, the games that they're putting out, and especially um, on the Apple side, there's a lot more indie hits than there was on uh, this roster. But I, I like where they're going. 
I don't think it's going to fit my lifestyle, but I like where they're going. That makes sense because yeah. like all three of us are more so console gamers. Yeah. yeah. But then there are actually. I, I think the timing was very. The timing, yeah, is, is yeah. kind of hilarious mm-hmm. to me. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's like, uh, okay. yep. Yeah, yeah. So they came out a week ago. Guess what? We got one too. Because it doesn't all... actually take away from either or because either you have an Apple device or you, or don't. you have an Android. <laughs> so right. It's not like, and, oh, so it's, you can have a choice. It's really, it's really interesting that. Because honestly, Google has been pushing their Stadia service, which is them yep. competing on sort of the console front, even though they don't have a console. It's a streaming service. So that's them kind of going up against the big boys. And then Apple, who we've been hearing for years wanted, about trying, them trying to get into the gaming space, they finally did it with Apple Arcade. And Google went like, we got something for you too. Like, <laughs> like the next week. Like, yeah, no one right, was hearing right. anything about a Google, you know, answer They probably to that. saw Apple's and was like, you know what? We could do some stuff without putting much work in it and kind of bundle it all together. And Maybe. just get some existing stuff and toss it in the pot. And then we'll be good. Yeah, and then they, they'll just work on it from here <laughs> yeah. until now. That's it. So, okay, we'll get, we'll get some, a few, you know, titles that we know people will like. And then, you know, we'll figure out the rest. It'll happen. <laughs> I want to reference, um, you talked about Stardew Valley earlier. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't talking about Stardew Valley. <laughs> what I was <laughs> talking about was Monument Valley. Oh, yeah, uh-huh. that's also on okay. there. Yeah, that's right next to it. Okay, so Monument Valley is the one I was thinking about. That's the gorgeous puzzle game that I've played that's relatively short, but I think everyone should definitely run through it at least once. Okay, yeah, that's also included yeah. in there. So, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, that's, def- that's a, a definite right. incentive for the mobile game <laughs> market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I even though I'm an Android guy, I probably won't be signed up for this either, to be honest. <laughs> like, because honestly, um, most of the games that are on there, like, I actually have access to elsewhere. Like, Stardew Valley yeah. is on my PC. I just haven't, yep. you know, touched it. Uh, some of these and other I, things I think are also on like Game Pass or, or I'm pretty free sure Code Tour is on Game stuff, Pass. You know, yeah. So yeah, <clears throat> like I have a console, I don't necessarily need this thing. But someone who doesn't play a lot of games, you know, at home, you know, they're on their phone playing what they can. This might be a great idea for them. Yeah, so I, I, it, it seems, I, I can't see anything negative about it, especially since um, when you have two people in the same market competing against one another, that's always a good thing. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Apple can't, you know, raise the price something. to $10 right. suddenly because it's going to make their value seem worse. I mean, it can. Goods. Doesn't mean I'm going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's, it's a way for them to, you know, compete and keep yeah, each other in check. Yeah, stay competitive. Yeah. So that's always good. But um, so we're going to move off from the arcade stuff and move into some MCU stuff. Mm. Hey. Spider Man is back. Guess who's back? back. And I think that's Back a smart again. decision on Sony's part. Went I think to fake like they didn't make a, a deal earlier, and then <laughs> and I think and this could have been all been a publicity stunt. <laughs> this could have all been a publicity I, stunt. I expected conspiracy theories like that to come out. I don't. I, well, let me let me know why why you think that they would go so far as to kind of fake the tension. So here's the thing: there's no such thing as what does it say bad press. Mm-hmm. That's true. true. So how much Very uproar true. was there of Spider-Man leaving the MCU? Oh no! What are we gonna do? Blah blah blah. And then you know people didn't like it. I, I can't think of one person who was like, "I think that's a good move." Yeah, I think exactly, that's a legit right? like, separation. <laughs> I think that's what's best Not for the child. I mean, I, I, I'll say I did see a lot of people who were being apologists for because the the larger conversation kind of blamed Sony. Because everyone mm-hmm. has this love affair with Disney. And honestly, I was also in the camp of blaming Sony. Because they're mm-hmm. the ones who have been messing up the Spider-Man franchise. But there were the people who are Sony apologists who were like, oh no, it's Disney. They're too greedy. Let Sony do what they want. It's their character. They own it. You know, stuff like that. Which doesn't help like, the situation. The situation yeah. are, are not really <laughs> <laughs> thinking about the big picture. Right. You know no. I mean? They're it's like... Too- those are those are the people that like hate the big guy just because he's the big guy. Exactly. You know what I mean? They they just need someone to be the bad guy, and it's like, why not Disney? Because they have all this power now. It's an easy they're, target. They're, they're they're just they're up to no good. That I mean, means no. Not, not saying not that saying they're not that up to no good. You can't be greedy. <laughs> yeah, right exactly. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just mean in this but, particular situation, yeah. they could have been wrong, or they could have not been wrong. We don't know for sure. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Is that That's why I feel like them planning this kind of elaborate situation just for the press 
it's highly likely. It's highly unlikely <laughs> because because no, these I are really these are big companies. Really like I I hundred percent believe that Disney went to the negotiating table after these, this big movie hit and went like, hey, we put in all this work. You see how much it returned because of what we did. We want more of the profit. And Sony also being a big company, they kind of had they have the rights to Spider Man. They they can say yes or no. Went no, we want all the money. <laughs> like we these want are big all companies, the right? They're like, why change the deal? Like everything's working fine, isn't it? And Disney's like, I mean, we're just not making like, as much money as we could be. Stupid. We see how much money you make it. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, you're not fine with this arrangement. Disney's I mean, like, no. The rich just want to keep getting richer. I mean, that's, that's all how it's, was. yeah, that's how it's always yeah. been. So I I'm not at all surprised that because because this is what they did because Disney didn't get their way. They went to the press. They went to social media to make it a big deal because they knew the fans would react like, oh, you're taking Spider-Man out of this franchise that we love so much. Like, no, don't do that. Yeah, I'm positive that that pressure kept the negotiations going. And Disney, what, they initially asked for, what, 50% of uh, box office revenue and then ended up taking 25, I think, is what it, Mm -hmm. it ended up, they agreed upon. Disney's a smart company. I don't think... They expected to get fifty, maybe out of the door. But you highball it. Yeah, yeah and when, then when they, they, go they stir the yeah, yeah. They, they stir the pot. They make Sony sweat. And then they say, "All right, we'll take twenty five. Sony goes, "Fine, we can agree to that." And they because probably would be cool know with them. If Sony did another <laughs> Spider Man movie, even if it was with Tom Holland, mm-hmm. it, not as many people would go see it. It could have the adverse effect where people were like, "I want to see what the difference is. I'm going to go see it." Right. Or you have the people. I'm not going to go see it because it is not the same. Or thing. even. Yeah. Or even the thing is because even if they do, because Sony could ride the wave of Tom Holland's um, popularity as this version of Spider-Man. They could use the same aesthetic. They could actually trick a couple of people who don't follow this kind of news. Just be like, "Oh, this is the new Spider-Man movie," but the quality of like their writing, their storytelling, stuff like that. If they go and see that movie and it's bad, then that damages the brand for the next one. Because, you know, yep. this isn't going to be the last the Spider-Man movie. In general. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cause like, because, like, Spider-Man was in the toilet with those amazing yes. Spider-Man movies. Like, people I don't know about were not that. watching I, them. I did not think they were that bad. But, I mean, whether or not you thought the they were that bad, one. they weren't making but money. overall, that is true. That is why they kind of, like, scrapped it. Because it was like, it just didn't make any. But as you got to look at what they did. Like, no offense to Jamie Foxx, but him is Shocker. I don't think that was a good decision. I don't even think I like it. But the, but the thing I is, didn't like it. Jamie Foxx is a good actor. Like the man's yeah, won an Oscar. So yes. tell me, what's the what's the, the the factor there that would make his role so terrible, so hated? Because I, so, I can't I, don't, I can't blame Jamie Foxx because like I'm trying to think of any other movie. Him. I blame yeah. the writing exactly. And yeah, the way the character was. So it wasn't his fault. As I said, no offense to him. Yeah. So it's but the production. the production, the the, the, the story. Special. I don't think that that character could carry a whole. He was supposed to be Electro, right? Yeah. That's not even kind of where Electro came from. So it was well, like... Hold on now. So now now you about to throw some comic book knowledge, right? No, no, no. And... I'm not going to throw any knowledge. <laughs> but I mean, like, the story compared to what... They could have changed the story, but that story wasn't interesting. It just wasn't good. It was, some, it was just saying. a normal one. Mal mannered guy who gets into an accident, gets all this power, oh, power and now becomes going crazy with it. a bad guy. That. I feel that it was a little tropey. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't nuanced. It wasn't what, interesting so what, enough. Isn't that what yeah. happened with Doctor Ock? He was just malmannered scientist. The the the, the experiment oh, went wrong, and then he he yeah. lost his stuff. Mm-hmm. So it was like they're using that same trope over and over and over and over. They, we've also learned that the best villains are sympathetic villains. But even though he was like this timid guy who was getting looked over, I didn't really feel all that bad for him to the point where I felt like his life or what he was doing justified was justified by the stuff he went through. It wasn't yeah. like his his you know he lost his his home was taken away. His son died because he didn't get the surgery he needed or something like that. I, that's something you should feel sympathetic for. I no, but I mean <laughs> he didn't. That didn't happen. I'm saying oh, that's like oh okay. None of that stuff happened. <laughs> oh, gotcha. That makes me believe that you know I should feel bad for him. Right. You know, so like his level of being a villain was like justified or something like that. So yeah, just, story just didn't make any sense. But anyway. um I think it's a good move to go back. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if they're still going to use the Venom and the Carnage situation that's coming up because they yeah, are I'm, doing a Carnage movie. Yeah, I'm. I, I don't know how they were planning that would work. To yeah. do that. Like if they are planning to do that, I, I, I don't know. Hope they don't. 
going on across the zone. I it's don't think just, so either. I hope it's just Venom and Carnage that yeah, deal with that situation. Let's have their own thing. I think it's I would hard love to see f- Venom in the MCU though, but I don't know if they'll be able to do that. Yeah, they're that's, already that's, having hard enough time keeping Spider-Man there. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, like the deal. It seems like it's only for like uh, the third was, movie in the in the Homecoming trilogy. They're calling it. Mm. Um, so he's going to be in the MCU for that, and then he's cleared for I guess cameos in other movies, but. I think other solo projects is still up in the air, so it could still kind of implode in the future. But I'm okay, hoping with some of the new it, characters kind of take up that kind of void that he might leave behind. Because I heard they're doing Camilla Khan, which is the the Ms. Uh, Ms. Marvel. Ms. Marvel. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say when, when it comes to Spider Man, um, the Spider Man movies in general. I think they just need to stop. Like, <laughs> what are you talking honestly, about? Honestly, Spider Man don't movies, make like, anymore. Like, I know that there's there's some people in the film industry right now whose whole career is Spider Man movies. Like, that's like a skill on their resume now, just Spider Man movies. Because how <laughs> long has these? How many origin Spider Man movies do we have? You could say how, like, the same thing about Batman, though. That is oh, true. Oh yes. That oh true. yes. You are absolutely right. Stop making Batman movies. <laughs> Stop making Spider-Man movies. Let's get some. As other long as people today. enjoy them, they're gonna make them. Yeah, and I, I, I don't think, mind them as long as they're good. You know. Yeah, exactly. And when you think about comics, what are some of the most well-known? Spider-Man, yeah. Batman, mm-hmm. Superman. Mm-hmm. There've been a lot For of Superman who, movies too. There has. Been. Yes. Yes, like there those. has been. Um, My favorite ups. thing in a Superman movie recently was in Man of Steel when. Old boy got yoked up by his cape and slammed to the ground. I thought that was <laughs> that would be like, your favorite thing that would because be. you're you're also a hater, a hater, and yeah. a hater. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm a realist, and mm-hmm. at the beginning of that movie, when the old man jumped into a tornado for a dog, you gotta look at the bigger picture and what the the bigger picture was a tornado. <laughs> the tornado <laughs> was the big sense. picture. <laughs> People treat their pets like part of their family. That wasn't even his dog. That wasn't even his dog. <laughs> it was oh, somebody yeah. else's no, dog. That was their dog. That was not their dog. Look, even if... Hold look, on, let me rewind. <laughs> Just give me a minute. Don't say anything. It was some random lady's dog, son. <laughs> it was the random lady's dog, and he threw his life away. Oh, I don't believe that. But go, anyway, go, go watch the scene. We got to look at the message he was trying to... That wasn't crypto. He was, that wasn't crypto. <laughs> <laughs> The message that he was trying to send was throw your life away for something that's not that important. He was important. trying to save the dog. He was saying to his son, don't get involved. The world's not ready for what you are. You know what I'm saying? Because if you'd have did that, it would have been he out You could have just stood next to him and said the same thing. Yep. <laughs> he went to save the dog. But we... Okay, the, the dog probably died the next week. Like, that, honestly. <laughs> the movie, that... To me, that was still the best Superman movie to date because it mm. kind of... Is that the know. latest... Yeah, to date. But it's means, also the latest, right? Yeah, that was the latest one, man, it's still. Uh, because <laughs> Would you it, count Superman, uh, Superman versus Batman or Batman versus Superman as a oh, Superman God. movie? I don't count that. No? I don't count that. Because I, no. I feel like that movie's better than Man of Steel. <laughs> I don't feel like it was better than Man of Steel. I feel like the writing was all over the place. I, I feel didn't like think man, that movie was better man than Man of Steel. They <laughs> kind of humanized Superman and sh- you know, kind of show what he went through as a kid. I like growing Madison. up. It shows that he doesn't know how to fight. Um, You're just a hater. We're going to end this call. If you keep this up. <laughs> I'm just letting you know this. I'm sorry, <laughs> super bad, Jeff. Look, You're the just, difference between you up, Jeff. <laughs> and and what's the name? Call. What's his real name? What's Superman? Kal-El. Kal-El. See, you don't even know. You can't even. Kal-El. make, you can't even make uh, statements name. when you don't know his name. His name is Kal-El. I'm, trying, I'm making Clark a point. Kent. The no. fact is, the difference between you, Jeff, and Kal-El, right, is that if... You could see through walls, you would look for kryptonite. Everywhere you go. Most walls <laughs> Kyle keep the kryptonite that, behind lead, lead. Walls. Okay, no, you not everyone has lead. lead. All these cats Who has not everybody has kryptonite? Yeah, whoever has kryptonite Every, is probably in case lead, lead. Walls. Everybody in the stupid metropolis has kryptonite. Like <laughs> no, <just> black, <laughs> every black has kryptonite. Like, all right, all right, all right. We're way off. We're going to do a separate <laughs> podcast for this. Way off. I on a tangent stand here. It, man. But, um, Superman aside, we're just going to say welcome back 
Tom Holland. And, and, and definitely check check Tom Holland's Instagram because he posted the most hilarious meme Yo, to announce that was. he was back. Yeah, yeah. I think he was so glad that happened. <laughs> Uh, I'm not even going to spoil what it is. Just go find his Instagram and see what he posted to announce that he was staying in the MCU because it's freaking hilarious. And I'm glad they did it, for the, if not anything else, but for the fans. I mean... It was for money. It wasn't for the fans. Yeah, it was. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it was just money, obviously. That's just... I, I think they planned this. They, I think Sony knew that they was going to come back. <laughs> but speaking of comebacks... Yeah. New Pokemon series poster leaked, and we've got Ash front and center with My alongside a brand Ash. new character. Um, in what looks like the Galar region, which is the Sword and Shield area, mm-hmm. right? So, mm-hmm. new game, new Ash Pokemon Lamar series to go Ketchum. with it. Same old protagonist. So, Ash is a champion, but he's still going to continue his journey. How do you guys feel yeah. about that? We talked that about it last week. doesn't mean he week. can't be hungry when he goes out there. That's what I was saying before. We ain't had to make this man wait 22 years. He could have <laughs> went out there, he could have got that W, and he could have still been hungry. He could have lost the next one. Mm. I want mean, to I see, see Ash grow up. I, I, wanna, I don't want to see. What if he starts growing up mind. now? Like I feel like those kind of things are still a possibility. He's won a championship. Maybe he'll have a different perspective coming into this new place. Like, oh, as a champion, you know, this is what I'm yeah, going to do. Yeah, you got to represent stuff. You got to be responsible. Like yeah, when people like, know his name when he shows up in town. Like, oh, you, you know won the saying? Aloha League, right? Yeah. What's the What's the region he won from? Uh, Aloha. Aloha. Uh, yeah. Alo- Alola. Alola. Alolan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Alola. Alola. Okay, so like, if he goes to other regions, he has to rep Alola hard. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Mm-hmm. Like if someone if someone in the uh, in the metropolis is like, you know, oh man, the Lola people they they crappy. They don't know how to Pokemon battle. They all dirty. <laughs> they don't know how to Pokemon die. over there. You don't know how to Pokemon over there. Ash has to be like, yo yo, chill chill chill. That's my that's my hometown. Yeah. I'll fight you right now. He like, said, what you trying to say? Fight. All you got is that Lola championship. That don't mean nothing over here, son. <laughs> <laughs> like, Let me show you what these Alolan Pokemon do. Mm-hmm. He said that buddy don't fly around here. <laughs> but I think no, it's I, good they kept him because he's he's pretty much he's the face of Pokemon. I mean, aside from Pikachu, who else do you yeah, know? Yeah. yeah. So Pikachu it's like Ash, it's like good, you. and it would just feel weird just to cut off his story as soon as he won. You know what I mean? You're right. So You're, I think it's something they got to work towards. You know, like you said, maybe he takes on an apprentice. He starts to get a little bit older. You see, like a a grown man, Ash. Uh, I don't know if his mama's dead or anything like that because it's been a no. while. His mom been on vacation uh, constantly. We haven't seen her. You know how anime do. <laughs> but I well, yeah, his dad does. His dad just doesn't exist, as far as I can tell. Yeah, they just showed him like yeah. in a, a can't like not his face or anything. Kind of like the little silhouette of him. Like did they? When they did a flashback when he was a kid. Like yeah, like the first season. Like the first season, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow, I don't even remember this. Yeah. Um, I think that this new kid is going to be an apprentice or a partner. Like maybe new region, they only do doubles for some reason, right? And he needs a partner, and they got to work together. They got to learn each other. Doesn't Ash always travel with two people? This yeah. last one, they really, he didn't, well, he didn't really travel in this last one. He was pretty much in the school. Yeah, he was, like, in a classroom and, with a yeah. group of kids. And there was, like, five people. So there was, like, a five of them. So most of the time it was, you know, there were some doubles, some trios. What do you call four people? A quad? Um, you don't. <laughs> you don't? <laughs> you said a quad. A quad. <laughs> a quad. <laughs> I'm pretty oh, sure that's quad. what they call them in like PUBG or Fortnite, pod, right? Like Quads. A whale. <laughs> <laughs> but it does make me interested to see. Um, excited for the new game that's for Sword of Shield that's coming out. Um, I haven't been excited for a Pokemon game in like a very, very long time. So I'm excited to see what goes on in anime, which, what, 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 what happens in the game. So that's going to be very. Doesn't that come out in November? That would be the only interesting thing so. for me. I'll double check right now. Um, if, if I'm going to. If the game and the anime link up, I might be into both. What do you mean by link up? I might though? be into both because that's super cool. Like you mean it like if he does a cameo in the game? Is that what you're saying? Like if, if you know, when you get to a certain part in the game, you can see that corresponding with a part in the anime. Oh, you, you mean know? the stories? It, oh, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's a story crossover. I think that'd be super cool. Has, you know, like, I mean, because pretty much every single game has had the anime go to that region, right? Is that something that yeah, they've done in no, the past? Yeah, that's always no. been kind of what it done, yeah. Wait, no, it has it, or has it? The events don't it has been. line up. You, know, the you gotta say two up. opposite things. <laughs> the events don't line up, but the location does. Yes. Okay. But, yes. So you're looking for the actual story the to have references to what's going on in the anime. I, I'll give you an example, right? Um... Uh, Star Wars The Old Republic, which is the MMO, 
mm-hmm. has you go through, I think it's eight or ten different storylines. Um, so depending on what class you choose. One of them, for example, was a Republic Trooper. So you play um, as a spe- special ops trooper in this Havoc squad, and you guys do all these daring missions and blah, blah, blah. Now, if you go and read the books in that same era, you read about how you don't know how they did it, but Havoc Squad destroyed this and that and that, and it's this general that led it, and this is the same general that you played through in the game. So while the book isn't about the game... So just a reference to Exactly. The event. And there's like little <laughs> inserts. So yeah, it lets you know that it's little... part of the same world. Exactly. Okay. So if you're in um, this new region in, in, in Pokemon, right, and I don't know, maybe like a, a volcano blows up and blocks off away, and then you watch the anime, and then Ash is like, oh, we can't go this way because the volcano blew up. Then you're like, okay, cool. There's some kind of like... Okay, I, see, I see what you're saying. So that'll, yeah. tickle, that'll tickle your fancy? <laughs> yes, that'll <laughs> tickle my fancy. But um, I, I, do think, I do think it's a known quantity that the game universe and the anime universe are separate from each other. Like I... That yeah, I feel yeah. That is unfortunate in that regard, but yeah, I like, don't think they exist in the same time. Like they're, they're like slight differences with the way uh, certain things happen, like certain characters, mm-hmm. certain whatever. Yeah. Um, and the release date is November fifteenth. So, like, cool, cool, dead cool. center cool. of November. That'll be here before we know it. Yep, yep. So we're gonna move on from Pokemon news. Um, and a couple of trailers dropped. We're going to start first with yeah. um, a new trailer for The Last of Us 2. Um, mm. They announced its release date, which is February 21st of 2020, so next year. Um, and honestly, Last of Us 2 looks pretty dope. It does. Like, I don't they think there was any doubt trailer, about that. It looked, yeah, and I don't <laughs> think anybody was like, uh, I'm a little skeptical about it. I think that's like, it already sold out of the um, collector's edition. Really? I heard yeah. that, yeah, yeah. People what do you, what are you get on in that fire for this game. Do you know? Hmm? Do you know what you get hmm? with the collector's edition? No, I don't know. It was like some type of Ellie uh, statue or something from what I from what I was reading. Um, I don't know about everything else. So um, I'm pulling up the collector's edition right now yep, yep. for PlayStation. Um, <laughs> let's see. This is showing. Yeah, there's a little statue of the main character. She's got a what is this, like a bracelet? Mm-hmm. There's some pins in there. There's some fan art. Um, there's some stickers. It looks like <laughs> there's a soundtrack. <clears throat> That's probably going to be just, Honestly, okay. That's it? You get the P4 dynamic theme. You get PSN, avatars, um, a digital soundtrack, digital art book. And you get some in-game stuff, which is ammo capacity upgrade and crafting training manual. Oh. Whatever that means. So that doesn't seem like a real great collector's edition. Most of them Besides are... the statue, <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen too many. What really about the good... one for Xbox? Um, let me what? Look. <laughs> what Wait, no. About? Hold on now. <laughs> you, you almost got me there. Uh, yeah. So I'm not. Unless you're a super huge fan of the series, I would. Yeah, now the collector's edition doesn't seem like it's. It depends on what the statue value that, but. But Everything else just seems like, oh, fan art, some pens, yeah, some needles, fan art. the sewing kit. <clears throat> what I don't like is, and you know, I guess it's because I'm not a super fan, but like they give you the art book and the soundtrack, and then they give you digital versions. Digital versions of those. Like, and I'm just like. So you're basically giving me the same thing twice. So, yeah, and all that to say I could Google search any of these images. Yeah, so, for 100 <laughs> bucks. <laughs> Why would I search it for 100 bucks? I'd just do it right now. No, I mean like the, the collector's edition is oh, 100 yeah, bucks. Yeah, yeah. Like. It's it's 169. Holy crap. Yeah. That is nowhere. That statue better be worth like 80 bucks okay. or something. See, it probably yeah. is minimum. This, this, honestly, most people were, are probably buying into it for the statue. Um uh, cuz not probably getting it for the ammo capacity, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I guess you're some kind of noob. You need cheats and such. Oh man. But anyway, in regards to the yeah. actual trailer um, it looked cool. Yeah, Ellie really is front and center. So it does seem like she's going to be the lead character in this. But they did show at the very end Joel making an appearance. He's mm-hmm. a little older, of course. But he, he literally says, you didn't think I was going to let you do this alone, did you? Yeah. <laughs> so he is going to be there. might be there. some co-op aspect to it? Um, that I don't know. They haven't said anything about that. I wonder. They didn't. 
I Some of the combat reminded me of uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I could see that. Some of her stealth takedowns. Mm-hmm. That's what kind of reminded me of. Well, I mean, the, the last, the original Last of Us had a lot of that in it too, and so did you know Uncharted before it. Mm-hmm. So I would yeah, say, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it would probably because um, if you remember like the original um, Last of Us trailers when they were showing off like how dynamic the combat was, where like the guys would fight you and like you try to hit them with a brick and they dodge it and blah blah blah. Like when you play the actual game, although I love the game and the combat and like the the atmosphere, it still never kind of hit the the kind of immersion level that they showed in those trailers. Oh, like, okay. You can still kind of see the seams of animations and whether this thing's going to work or not. Like, it wasn't as dynamic as they painted it. And once yeah. again, in these trailers, like, they make things look like just the Very best fluid. possible version of them. And it's like, I always got to take a step back because I've been fooled before with these kind of things where it's like, okay, the game doesn't really play like that. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't mean that's going to be bad, but it's just, I don't know. I'm especially wondering if when they you can, have, you know, reach it. Especially when you have seamless transitions between cutscenes and action, mm-hmm. it's it's hard to tell when you're watching a trailer. You know, yeah, when you're actually playing kind of game. the game or when it's just mm-hmm. showing you right. a movie. Because <laughs> uh, it is like, a beautiful game. Uncharted by the way. was was when that was one of the most mind blowing things about that game when I first played it. You never knew when the action was gonna stop and the cinematic was gonna begin. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And sometimes you're you're watching the cutscene and you're like, why is my character just standing there? Oh wait, it's my turn to play. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> that's a beautiful uh, game as well. I can't. I yeah. actually need to go back and finish a Thief's End. Just yeah, I literally have it sitting right next to me over here. I have not opened <laughs> opened the box yet. But all mm-hmm. that to say, this game it looks really good. I feel like people fans of this series will not be disappointed. Agree. Um, especially if you like, and and, and, and new people. Who like zombie games, thrillers, suspense kind of deal? A good rich story. Yeah. Well, that that that's the thing that I'm know. actually concerned about is the actual yeah, I don't... story. Because because where does it go after? Right, like the way yeah. the first game ended was like super compelling, and like it, mm-hmm. it kind of left on this kind of ambiguous cliffhanger that kind of leaves you thinking about what could have happened without you necessarily wanting to get the answer. Like the fact that it was ambiguous was kind of the thing that made it brilliant but then this story kind of ignores those repercussions as far as you can tell maybe those will come back up but as far as the trailer goes it seems like a kind of basic revenge story like there's the girl who in that first tri- that first reveal um ellie had a you know shared a kiss with you see that girl again asking her about that kiss and then you see a situation where maybe she gets kidnapped maybe she gets hurt or killed we don't know for sure mm-hmm. and then ellie yeah. wanting revenge against whatever that group is and people warning her hey don't go against that group you don't know anything about them that seems to be the draw maybe something else happens but so far that's not a compelling story like that's not enough to to pull a sequel the likes of the first game because the first game story was a lot more nuanced than just that you know i can see i can see that yeah you don't want this story to be too one-dimensional right especially mainly because the last of, of the us, last game. yeah, the last game's story, I want to say is kind of sixty percent of what makes that game so great. Like the gameplay is yeah. fine, but mm. honestly, that's that wasn't really breaking any barriers down with the way mm-hmm. the game worked. All of that no, was the story executed and the well. Voice acting yeah, it was how the story yeah. was told along with it. So Got if, you. if they're kind of doubling down on just giving you more of that Last of Us style gameplay and the story doesn't really pull the weight. I feel like people might end up being a little disappointed. I can see that. I get that, yeah. But, I mean, that's my take. Uh, anything yeah. else you guys wanted to point out about that trailer specifically? No, it looks beautiful. Visually, well, it looked yeah. amazing. Well, yeah. let's go to the next trailer that dropped. Brand new trailer <laughs> for Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Man. This looks fantastic. <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness. I wasn't impressed. You weren't impressed. Uh, okay. I hate you <laughs> so much, Superman Jeff. Let me hear. I just how are you not when I impressed? see him, I just think of Gotham. You think of the Joker. And I'm just I'm like, Gotham. What do you what, mean? Yeah. Is that the actor? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Who played Jerome? Really? I, I, yeah. I need to go look at him side by side. I had no you idea. You didn't see the resemblance? No, Yo. I didn't at all. <laughs> Did you have your glasses on? Matt, to be honest, um, <laughs> now that you're mentioning that, Deborah Wilson's also in this game, right? 
um, from Mad TV. I think so yeah, she was also so. she was also in the, like the last Wolfenstein game. She plays like that black woman who like rescued him in the beginning. Oh, okay, okay. She doesn't yeah. look good. Like the faces don't look as good. <laughs> is what I'm saying. Like I could recognize it was Deborah Wilson. Yeah, but. Coming from um, her portrayal in Wolfenstein, she looked more like herself in that versus how she looks here. So I'm like, that's probably why I didn't recognize who that kid was. Because like, I feel like the art style might be suffering a little bit. Yeah, like, that game doesn't. He look looks as... a little. He, I don't know the way he's built too. To me, he's built very bulky. Uh huh. I don't know if that's just because the equipment he has on or what. Maybe he um, hit the gym. He hit the gym. That's, that's, that that could them. be it. That could I be it. I think it's more the equipment he has on. He was, uh, from the looks of the trailers, he was a mining worker before, so he definitely had some equipment on. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's also, yeah, if, if you see in the trailer, he he's walking off one of the ships. He looks relatively small. He, mm-hmm. That that poncho just really makes him look bigger than he needs to be. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's a lot of extra space in there for what? Like, for all, that, all those midichlorians. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Can you tell me the story yeah. of the Midichlorians? So I mean, what, 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 I have what, to say, what about the trailer has you excited about this game? I love villains, right? Mm-hmm. The Inquisitor looks amazing. That's the dude and guy they were shooting at who was dodging stuff? I'm not sure if it was a guy or girl. I didn't Well, well yeah, the, sorry. Yeah, the person no, it's all right. who was yeah. like, dodging lasers and try, like, swiped at the door. And I'll only say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, in the <clears> mask. <throat> it looks actually like a woman. I'm, I'm rewatching it right now, but it's... The Inquisitors in um, Rebels, mm-hmm. that's what it is, in Rebels, they look almost exactly like this, and they were so, each one was so, while they had similar gear, they were pretty unique in their, their fighting styles, and they're, they're wannabe apprentices of Vader. So it's, it's just the coolest thing to see this in action in this Dark Souls-like, very well- <laughs> choreographed trailer because that's the thing that got me excited is that more so than dark souls this game looks a lot like sekiro yes it, we, we said that before yeah. right like the, yeah. like when they did the, ga- the extended gameplay trailer like that was the the analog that seemed the closest to how the game works and yeah. they showed like the you know the big boss fights where you know he's rolling out of the way he's like yes. smashing at the stuff like that stuff looks really fun to play so, like, that's wait. the thing that got me excited. Like, the story can be whatever. I know you're big on, like, Star Wars lore. Like, me less so. Yeah. But the, but the, the actual gameplay, yeah, like, that a looks, lot of fun. That looks really, really good to me. Yeah. I just don't like it. <laughs> okay. Oh, <man. laughs> that's that the reason? That feels like straight hate. Like, that. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is, you know? Um, but um, I'm, I'm hoping that the... Because I'm interested to see... Is this game going to be canon, or is it not going to be canon? I think it is. Canon. is I'm pretty right? sure it's going to be canon. Yeah, I think, think everything so? everything released in the Star Wars universe uh, now is yeah, going to be is, canon. Is, is okay. counted as canon. Because a lot of stuff got kind of just like... I feel you. I feel you. That was one of the biggest blows um, that the Star Wars fandom took, is when they cut a lot of the... Some of the really good stories from canon... Um, you know, from the canon list, that was just that was really weird for everybody. You don't know who to what to believe, you know. But everything coming out new now is supposedly canon, good to go. And and they've like I talked about. I think it was last week I talked about how Battlefronts Two, the Resurrection um, expansion, actually led into the movies. Like it was another side of the movie. So that might be happening. That might happen. Um, might be some references in the Fallen Order here. I don't or like know. Maybe some character. Mm-hmm. Who's, well, we already know Saw Guerrero. Uh, yeah, shows so, up. Yeah, we yeah. saw him. Gosh. Yeah. So maybe some new character from here will possibly show up in a future movie, like exactly. Deborah Wilson, for example. She's technically exactly. in the Star Wars universe now. <laughs> yeah. So big and, ups to her. Yeah, come on, sister. Uh, Saw Guerrero in general is a crazy character. He is the definition. If you guys know D and D alignments, he's the definition of chaotic good. <laughs> yeah, that's that, that's in a lot of games where they'll do whatever it takes to anything for the greater good. Yeah, and the cool thing is, and, and I'll, I'll I won't go too far, but in the Clone Wars, you see him as a young kid with his sister and being a rebel from the get go, and then you see his whole transformation into this chaotic person. He was very logical and by the books before, 
and just seeing him go into this well of craziness is, is <clears throat> wild. You said that was him. He was in the Clone Wars, like the the animated series. Mm-hmm. Yep. Was yeah. that before Rogue One? That was yeah. Yeah. That was before yeah. Rogue One. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know. I really didn't know that that lineage went that far back. Yeah. That's cool. No, it, it it's not a long period of time between the movies, to yeah. be honest. And it's between three and four is only like. 15 years 15 or 16 years because luke is not very old and he is born at the end of three um so it, it's definitely not more than 20 years in between episodes three and four so saw is as you saw in rogue one he was an old man mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know um but he and he's had lots of body modifications from all the damage that he took with but in you know, in uh jedi fallen order he's younger i'm assuming like, yeah, is this so, like him well, in his prime or no? I I don't know. I, okay. I'm excited to see. Yeah. All right. One thing, when it comes to Star Wars stuff, I don't like to do too much research ahead of time. I like to experience the story. With this new movie that's coming out, when the trailer drops, I will not be watching it. I'm letting everybody <laughs> know right now. Don't expect me to talk about it because I'm not going to watch it. I watched the last movie without watching a trailer mm-hmm. and it was amazing it is one of the best experiences my brother put I, me on to that i like the last movie too it was great yeah a lot of people didn't for some reason i, yeah. I don't i don't i honestly don't understand what the issue is because too many people are afraid of change that's what it is that's and they're trying to say it throughout the whole movie like yo things need to change right yeah that's <laughs> kind of the whole point of the new that was the whole trilogy. point of the movie. yeah <laughs> like they're literally <laughs> showing you like what what happens to the fanboy because that's what um uh adam driver's character i can't remember his name in the thing now uh kylo ren kylo ren that's basically what he's doing is he's being a fanboy and holding on mm-hmm. to the old stuff and yeah that's super interesting so but yeah let's, let, we can keep moving we're gonna move you know on what? from star wars stuff <laughs> um last story Bro. <laughs> call of duty modern warfare this is the reboot of the call of duty series been getting a lot of good buzz over the past couple of you know, weeks up into its release. Almost had now, me by it. Right? Now we're hearing it has an exclusive mode that's going to be stuck on PlayStation 4 for an entire year before any other version sees it. Um, I'm not sure if that includes PC, but definitely not Xbox. Yeah, see, that's the stuff that gets me. I'm paying the same price, mm-hmm. and I'm getting less content. I can see if it's some cosmetic stuff. You know what I mean? That's not it. No. And, and- PC players are also upset about this. They, they, they I, don't get the exclusivity. That That's kind of the deciding factor for me. I won't be getting it just because of that. I'm not going to pay gonna the same price and pay get less. pay 100% of yeah. the price and get 99% of the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's just it's blatantly anti-consumer. <laughs> mm-hmm. It really is. Like It's, it's the exact same thing that happened um, with you know certain Destiny content. Yep. Except at the very least, with the Destiny content, it was like an extra mission. Strike, yeah. It was an extra weapon, an mm-hmm. extra armor, you know? This is literally a game a whole, mode. Mm-hmm. And, and the thing is... Spec Ops survival mode. That's, the, right, that's yeah, what it's called. Right, yeah, that's what the game mode. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, it seems interesting. I would like to have tried it out because... But you, you know, won't this is a get new thing, but I won't get to it unless I can get on PlayStation 4. And like you guys know, <laughs> most of the friends that I would play these kind of shooter games with would be on Xbox. X- Not everybody has yeah. all the consoles. So if I want to play with my regular group of friends, I'd still have to get it on Xbox, but then I'm missing out on the entirety of the game. Yeah. And, and what makes this even more heinous is Call of Duty is notoriously a yearly franchise. By yep. next year... There's going to be a brand new Call of Duty. Another game. And that's when uh, people are going to be able to play this new mode? F you, dude. Like, that's so disrespectful. Like, (laughs) it's mad disrespectful. Yep. Like, I I encourage you, if you had any interest in playing this game and you wanted to play it on either PS4 or Xbox or PC, don't buy it. Because if you you give them the, you know, the high profits, uh, the record sales so that they can go on, you know, uh, and make press releases saying this is the highest seller in Call of Duty since blah, 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 blah. They're not going to give a damn about all the people who feel like this is unfair or the fact that it mm-hmm. is, you know, inherently unfair. They're yeah. just going to do it again because it doesn't matter. People buy it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> if you want this to stop, don't buy the game. Yeah, don't buy it. 
Like, and honestly, it does hurt that, you know, the development team who's behind this kind of stuff, they probably aren't the ones who are, who are making that decision to kind of lock content behind paywalls and stuff. So if if their games don't sell, that might hurt them in, in a long way. But we kind of, there's no other way to get that message to the publisher, to be honest. Yeah. So you got you to gotta talk with your money. Like, yeah. I'm and not going to them know. It. Let them know why you're not buying it. Let them and know what the reason why. Yeah, vocalize that. I feel like, you know, our our protest, if you will, isn't out of Xbox fandom. And right. it's not out right. of PC fandom. I, I want to make that clear to our listeners. That's not what this is about. This is about this production company or, or the marketing company. Whoever is making these decisions. More than likely producers. Activision, the publisher. Activision yeah. and Sony. Like, they, they're the ones who worked on this deal, not necessarily Infinity Ward or whoever's uh, True. putting the game out this year. It's about them manipulating and exploiting their consumers. Absolutely. That's what this is about. It's stupid. Yeah. And it's disrespectful. Especially for a year. That's just ridiculous. For a year? Yeah. Yo, month. if they said a month, yeah. I'd be like, ah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I mean, it's something you could eat a month. Yeah. You know? Yeah. A but year? A, a year is, it's a slap That's in the face like... to anyone, <clears throat> to any of your consumers who aren't Sony players. I'm no lawyer, right? But I feel like that's the equivalent of when a judge sentences someone to like 200 years in jail. It's like, okay, dude, like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah. That's I'm not going to do 200 years. <laughs> that's like a whole birthday. Like, I wouldn't be birthday. thinking about Call of Duty in a year from it. I mean, who, unless it's like, like you said, another one comes out. Yep. I'm not saying I'm going to get the next one, but there'll be other things I'll be playing by then. Oh, yeah, easily. It was, it was the same thing, even with Destiny, which was a game that had, you know, longevity. We played that game for several years. Mm-hmm. When the new content came, like, it wasn't, it wasn't like, an exp- it wasn't like, yes, we got the new content. It was, like, kind of over and done with. Like, yeah. For example. We past that part in the story. Do you remember, um, what was it? Hawk Moon was the exclusive gun, I think. Yes. On PS4. Yes. And, mm-hmm. like, that gun was so powerful, it changed the multiplayer meta mm-hmm. on PS4. But it yeah. got nerfed by the time it came to Xbox. Put, uh, to Xbox so yeah. it basically showed up and had no impact. So mm-hmm. what's even the point? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, and, and to, to, to mirror anything... what Blue's saying. Uh, go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I was, was going to say, to mirror what you're saying, like, it's not because we prefer to play on Xbox yeah. that we have a problem. Like, if, if it was the opposite way around, if Xbox was doing this and locking PS4 players out, I'd be just as upset. Because yeah. it is not okay to do this. Like you, you split your consumer base, you you charge people the same amount of money for less and product. And stoking console wars too. Yeah, and like, and you get you end up making people get behind these dumb decisions. There are a lot of Sony fanboys who are happy who about love this. this. Because they it, love this. they're like, oh yes, it hurts Xbox people. It hurts you, dude. Because <laughs> because okay, maybe this round you guys get an exclusive mode for a year, but. If that worked out, and Xbox sees that it's hurting the fact that they don't have a similar thing, then next time they're going to do it for some other game that you maybe want to play. They're mm-hmm. going to say, all right, we're going to lock it for two years. Matter of fact, Xbox did do it um, for Tomb Raider, except really? th- the game itself was exclusive for a year before it could come to Sony. Yeah, that's different. That's, I mean, because it's different. Yeah, It's different in the fact that they couldn't play the game at all. Yeah. But, but that's a better like scenario because you didn't force them to pay for it. Like this, exactly. what, what Activision is doing right now is the worst possible version it's of this. Theft. Yeah, it's like theft. it's it's the worst version of this kind of split it's exclusive theft. like piecemeal exclusivity. Like it's awful. Like don't If support I buy a car things. and you got a car, we should both have four wheels. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but because you bought a PS4 and this guy bought an Xbox, he's got to drive a car with three wheels. On the same it's streets. <laughs> it's just a bad bad uh business to me to it's probably pick, good business in our capitalistic world yes but, <laughs> but i mean as far as like it's a bad big business well capitalist. i wonder because the way these kind of deals come about right it's it's sony it's either activision coming to sony and saying pay us and we'll do this for you or sony going to activision and saying we'll pay you and do this for us it's one or the other i i feel like i feel like part of the inspiration for this might have been because Call of Duty was not selling well on the P4. Is that true? Because it has the the much bigger install base, so I 
I would have to imagine, it, I, like for multi platform, that would be the place it sells best, regardless. Yeah, I don't know. I feel I I can't. I don't know why they would do this. Well, we'll we can actually look into those numbers and kind of maybe we'll bring it up on the next podcast to like, see what the comparison was between. Yeah, Soda I'll, I'll make a note of that. We'll see if we can look. Yeah. look we won't include up. Switch. So. <laughs> like you can't include Switch, but if if can I, I had to guess, I would think it was Sony that approached Activision with, "We'll give you additional money." To lock something away for us because that helps them kind of boost their own console. Yeah. Like for Activision, like other than taking the extra money, like it doesn't serve them as much to just to go seeking that because they're trying to sell this thing on all consoles, you know. But especially going into the holiday season, so right, it's like yeah. so it's it's just it's just ugly. It really is, and I really do hope that there's some kind of tangible effect from the community because it does seem like people are upset about it. Like, the, the overarching yep. sentiment isn't, oh, Xbox people are mad and Sony people are happy. It's everybody's kind of upset. Because it's, yeah. I just hope that they're upset enough to, to, to not pay something. the $60 yeah. for it. Now, one of the biggest thing, one of the biggest things about this story that we haven't mentioned is the hype about this game initially was cross-play. Yep. Yes. So, that's, so this is a thing... That so, only Sony people would be able to even play online, right? If it's an online mode, I don't even know what the mode is, to be honest. I don't know what the mode is. We but, just know we if we get it on Xbox, we ain't getting it. Yeah. Pretty so much. it's just like, okay, you guys, everyone can play or together PC. except for the special kids. You guys get to play this. <laughs> yeah, right? I'm being, you know, and I didn't discriminate mean, against. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not calling P4 special education no, he's saying they're saying. they're getting something <laughs> special. They're getting preferential special treatment. Special treatment. Yes. yes. You know what I'm saying. It's just... So, I don't know. I mean, if, if anybody together. yeah, if anybody listening has a different opinion as to, like, maybe why Let they think know. this is a good thing, definitely hit us up and explain your side. I want to read these, these comments in the YouTube. Yeah, uh, yeah most definitely. Comment yeah. on YouTube or send us an email if you want. BBET yeah. gaming at gmail.com. That's right. Um, but that's going to do it for our topics. We're going to go into our top threes. This top week, three. we're going to talk about the top three difficult choices in games. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you guys don't mind, I'll go first because I kind of go with these sure. haphazardly. And I don't think Ooh, they're very oh, good. But, <laughs> but <laughs> um, the first one I want to talk about is, um, if you guys remember, Heavy Rain, which was a yeah. Yeah. PS4 yes. exclusive. PS3 exclusive, sorry. Um, I actually like that game a lot, even though David Cage gets a lot of uh, flack for his kind of story-heavy games nowadays. But um, there's a part in that game, and honestly, I'm forgetting whether or not you can choose to do it or not do it. I think you can. But there's a section where the main character, you know, he's looking for his son who's been kidnapped by a serial killer. And he's, like, putting him through all these trials to kind of prove his love to his son to actually save him and get him back. He makes him sit down at a table and cut his finger off. That that moment in that game, even though I'm watching the digital character do it, they make you like do the motion with like the, the oh stick my to like God. cut through the, the finger. And like you can stop and like go, no, I don't want to do it no more. And like the choice to kind of keep going, I felt like was actually like very, like, it was very like nerve wracking. Like the way Ooh. they kind of animated oh that my section. Oh gosh. So that really, even to this day, sticks out in my head is like, the fact that he chose to do that, like even if it's not me who chose it as a player, mm-hmm. kind of putting myself in the shoes of the character, basically the character as a father saying, like, I'm going to choose to sacrifice just the finger and go through this pain to try to get my son back. Like, he doesn't know for sure. He's just acquiescing to the whims of this crazy person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I thought for all that he that knows, the son is dead already. And yeah. He's just you know, doing this. Yeah, that's I thought sad. That, that that in-game choice for him to go through that really, like, sticked out stuck out to me yeah so i added that to my list <clears throat> um this might be on some other people's lists but um walking dead no not no. for me Mm-mm. Mm-mm. the final and this is a spoiler for walking dead but oh, years and years the ago first season yeah first season oh, i know what ago. you're gonna go with Talk yeah. to me. that's a good one when at the end lee gives clementine the choice to either kill him or to just run off 
to let him turn. Yeah. Yeah. To either let him turn into a walker or for her to actually just put him out of his misery. And I felt like it was the right thing to do. Like Lee would have wanted her to shoot him in the head. Yeah. That's to show that right. to, to put him out of his misery, but also to show that she's able to survive. Right. That in she's that world. able to yeah. make those tough decisions because at this point she's going to be on her own. Yep. So like that was a very very poignant scene. Yeah, it was it was really sad. It was. But um that also kind of still sticks sticks out to me. Like now y'all going to have to educate me. Those those two characters, what are their relationship? Um, well, Lee, I think you had these yours. Uh so yeah, Lee um he's kind of just a dude at the beginning of the the story. Um he just happens to be heading to jail because he murdered a guy who he caught cheating, who he caught his wife cheating on him with. Makes mm-hmm. sense. So he's okay. on his way to jail, but then the zombie apocalypse breaks out, the car flips yeah. over, and he you know, escapes off into... Good to go. Yeah. So he happens upon a little girl who's alone in her house because her mm-hmm. babysitter was killed, and then there are zombies trying to get her. That's the little girl with the, with uh, the blue hat, right? Yep, with yeah. The hat. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So he kind of just happens upon her and then takes care of her. He's mm-hmm. not a guy who I think had a daughter who lost her or whatever, like kind of like uh, yeah. the last Joel. of us. Yeah. yeah. But because they both happen to be black, when they meet other characters, it's up to you. Um, they ask you, like, oh, is this your daughter? And you can either lie to them or you can say, no, mm-hmm. I just found her. I chose to just say, yes, my daughter, because to, it other, people, weird. Yeah. Yeah, to other people, it just answers all their questions as to why you're taking care of her immediately. Yeah. Like, they don't need to know. Yeah. But over the course of the game, he really does assume the role of like a father figure for her because her parents are gone. So Damn. by the end of the game, they go through all these trials and tribulations, all and these Lee different situations. Fit. He's trying to teach her how to take care of herself. Like you have all these options to either teach her how to use a gun or to protect her from it. You can keep her hair long because she likes it, or you can tell her to cut it because it's less it's likely dangerous. for her to get grabbed. So yeah. all these things you're teaching her over the course of the game. And that's kind of the final lesson here. Like, look, I've been trying to train you to be able to take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. Now you're gonna have to, like right now, you're gonna have to. So, if you haven't yeah. played that blue, I definitely would. Especially yeah. that first season. The yeah. first season is definitely the highlight. Everything yeah. after that, I think, is probably to a lesser degree. And you can you can finish it in like a few minutes. I mean, not a few minutes. A few like minutes, hour. jeez. Hour, <laughs> hour, like, right, an hour or two. You can finish it in one sitting, pretty much. Oh, okay. yeah, you can. Okay. You can get through it in like one sitting. All right. But, um, so that out. was my second one, and the last one was actually the not the first Wolfenstein, but the more recent first wolf sign of this latest trilogy that one was okay. called the new order i think okay yeah 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 um close to the beginning of that game um you're in a situation where you and two of your squad mates get captured by like mm-hmm. the big bad guy the, like the person you end up fighting at the end of the game all you guys get captured by that dude mm-hmm. and he makes you choose whether to save like the gruff guy who's like your direct superior or like the newbie recruit who's like shows promise but he's like scared crap scared oh crap right now it's like so one guy's like talking crap he's basically telling you like like don't worry about me all right like i don't care what he does don't give him no info like don't don't yeah. give him the satisfaction or whatever <laughs> because if you don't choose he kills them both in front of you and then you have to go back to the beginning and choose anyway so oh that's not gosh. an option for you to just sit there so the other kid is begging you, like, please, I don't want to die, I don't want to die. But he's a punk. Like, whoever you save is going to be with you in this situation mm-hmm. for, like, the next couple of minutes. So you either go with the guy who is telling you, don't worry about me, but he's going to be, you know, useful yeah, yeah, useful in a fight. Or the guy who probably you're going to have to take care of, but he's begging you to save him. So, honestly, I went with the kid because, I don't know, I have an altruistic thing in my head where it's like, if he's ready to go and he's telling me, like, look, don't worry yeah. about me, then I'm going to save the guy who who isn't there yet. And eventually... Yeah, because I think, like, the older dude would be salty. Like, yo, why'd you kill the yeah, crew, like, bro? I you... just told you. Right. Like, uh, uh. But, um, Now they got my old self here. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready to go. This but, all hurts. Yeah, killing It's me. a cool decision because it actually yeah. affects the rest of the game. Like, you literally right, play right. the rest of the game with that that's character. Nice. And, like, that's cool. different things happen based on who's left alive. And that. that situation follows you to the next couple of games. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, it's a trilogy. And, like, those characters survive on in the second game. And I think as well as... I think they also survive on in the third game, too. Mm-hmm. Wait, is there a third game? No, they, the third game was like a kind of a spinoff with two sisters. Okay. Uh, Youngblood. 
So oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know uh, if those characters still show up there either. But I thought that was really cool. Like it was a a lot of times people will give you like games will give you decisions in the beginning that you make and you don't understand the ramifications of them. Uh, and this one is similar as to you don't know what's going to come next, but it makes you curious as to what could have happened mm-hmm. the whole time. It's not like okay, so this is just the story now. It's I wonder what would happen here if the other guy was here and not this guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel so that. I thought that was actually really cool. But um, those are my three. Uh, any of you guys want to volunteer to go next? Um, I got it. I got it. Go so right my top three hardest decisions in video games. First one is kind of light. And it's um, just The Sims 4. <laughs> Making my character. <laughs> <laughs> so just building a character in general. Just building a character exactly how I want it. It's very difficult for me. <laughs> uh, when I first started playing that game, legit, at least two hours making my little family. Jeez. At least. I don't little know family. what it is. I just I wanted to get everything right. I, was like, I don't I don't play that. too much of The Sims. Like what what did they actually give you the option to choose from in those creators? Okay, so plenty of different hair options, eyes, you know, facial features, so body it's all type. cosmetic, or it's it, well, no, because all that body types and then you have personality traits, you know, all that stuff determines your character's quality of life. So if they start off big, right, and they're let's say for whatever reason they have a job as a fitness trainer, they're going to end up becoming strong and people are going to see them progress, mm-hmm. you know, and, and they're going to slim down, especially if they're eating right, different things like that. Uh, but if they have traits where they can't really lose weight fast because of genetics or whatever, then, you know, that's that's different. So there's, there's positive and negative traits that you can make about your characters and depending on what you want to do. And I think the hardest thing for me was deciding what I wanted to do in The Sims 4. I, I've said this, um, if, if you hear me talk about The Sims, you'll hear me say this. The Sims is the latest and probably the most grown-up version of a dollhouse. Um, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense when you put it and, that way. You know, like, <laughs> honestly, because the majority of Sims 4 players that I've seen are women. And I can see there's that, nothing yeah. wrong with that. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying... I was wondering, like, why do they gravitate towards that game, especially women in our generation? And I'm realizing that it's a lot. It's very similar to the dollhouses back in the get, back in the day that young kids played with. So, um, yeah, I love the game. I think it's great. It, oh, making a new character is always one of the hardest decisions for me to start playing the game. So that's my first one. Okay. My next one was, you know, there's always a Star Wars in there. I, yeah, I knew it was there's always, I knew You knew there was a Star Wars. <laughs> Nazi Little Republic 2, mm. at the very end. Okay. The, so, your Nazi mentor. Republic 2 spoilers coming. Yes, when you have to choose to embrace. Embrace the dark side or fight it. Yeah. With your mentor, Kreia. Now, the cool thing about this game, right? It's a Bioware game, so you know there's moralities, there's companions. Um, your character's your character influences your companions, right? If you do a lot of bad stuff, your companions start getting dark too because they're on board with it. Or they start hating you because you're getting that way and they're mm-hmm. not as effective. And vice versa. If you're really good, they start, you know, oh, maybe I shouldn't be a thief no more, you know? Yeah, or I should good. be a thief for the good people. Like, you know, some stupid stuff like that. But Kreia, your mentor, is the only person that never changed. She was always neutral. So mm-hmm. you're just like, man, how do I influence her? My first, pay- my first playthrough, I'm like, how do I influence her? Like, how, you know, I'm doing all this stuff. She either hates it or she likes it or she doesn't. Or she always has some snide comment to say as a mentor, but she's never swayed by it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, I'm supposed to be this chosen one. And I can't, like, get her really on my side. Like, what's <laughs> the-? And then you find out that she's been manipulating you the whole time. And she's like, look, we just destroyed this big bad. All right, you can either join me as the bigger bad, or we can fight right now and I'll kill you. Wow, mm. gave you that choice, bro. Take and I'm sitting there, or and I was me. like 15, 16 when I first played this game, and I'm like, bro, I don't know what to do. 
Because Kray is strong, and if you play with her a lot, you build her up. So, do you fight this built-up version of Kray, or do you just join her? The first time I joined her, I was yeah, like, I'm I, not going to fight. I had a, I had a feeling. <laughs> I go find the lady. Like, yeah, come on, yeah, crazy me. I want like a good proposition. <laughs> sounds like a good proposition. Is, so, there, is there benefits? Okay. We always been cool, Craig. What you? What you mean? <laughs> <laughs> but I think she wants you to like kill parts of your crew or something like that. Oh, I can't wow. remember what. So yeah, joining her has some sacrifices. Yes, it oh, definitely wow. has sacrifices. You kind of crap on all the work you've done before to rid the rid or aid the galaxy of like the last remaining Jedi Order it, or of that era it's it's wild so anyway that was a very difficult decision for me back in the day uh my brother played the good version of it uh-huh. so we had different save files and fighting her was difficult as heck oh <laughs> my goodness Cause, like i said you, you customize all your characters as far as the gear that they have and the skills that they have and mm-hmm. the abilities that they develop and if you tweaked her up Yo, it's now granted they auto level as well, but they're specified when you do it. And oh my gosh, if That's you really maxed cool. her out, she was so difficult to beat. So yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. Um, and last but not least, this one was a heart wrencher. It actually made me stop playing the game. I've never finished this game. <laughs> really now, Dragon Age Two. Okay, mm. mm-hmm. there's a whole struggle between mages. Right, because mages opened the world to the the nether realm or whatever. I can't remember. It was like a void or something like that. Yeah, and where they got their magic from. That's where they got their magic from. And if they weren't careful, a demon from the void will come out and take over the mage and do crazy damage. Right. Mm-hmm. Like it, there's a whole order. Uh, I think there are templars. Yep. That templars were, and mages. Yep. Exactly. So templars were supposed to take down the crazy mages. Um, and mages just really wanted to live their life and be who they were. <laughs> Your main character has a sister that is a mage. Uh, uh-huh. So it gets to the point where people start to find out, and near the end of the game, they're like, look, either we lock up all the mages in this one tower, and you'll never see them again, and the world will be safe for sure, or you trust the mages including your sister, you trust them to live their life free and you fight the Templars who are trying to just cruelly subjugate them. Hmm. I sat there and I looked at my sister and I looked at the rest of the world and then I hit the power button. <laughs> oh, dang. <laughs> and, uh, I'm not ready for this. I said, you know what? This is not real. I do not need to get emotional. <laughs> Never finished it. Never finished it. Oh my god! So you I never still went don't back. Know exactly what I would have done. No, mm. I still don't know because like, it's a hard decision. That's, it is because really, I'm hilarious. getting emotionally involved with all the characters that you meet, and you know you're doing a lot to protect your sister this whole time. She's sweet. She's gorgeous. I think she loses control like a tiny bit once, and you're just like, oh, okay, this mm. might be bad. And the Templars are just total jerks. There's not one nice one. They're like, you know what? I'm sorry. This is the way it has to be. But, you know, we're just trying to look out. Ain't nobody like that. They're like, man, F those mages. Like, they had, I think they actually had, like, a slur for mages. Oh, wow. Yeah. And they yeah. were your sister that. And it was just like, bro. It was like, like that in the Inquisition, too. They really, like, the mages and the Templars just. Yeah. They oil and mm-hmm. water, man. Wow. So, that was. That was I have an honorable mention I'll talk about later, but that was probably the hardest decision I've had to make, and I didn't make. <laughs> <laughs> the hardest decision I ran away from. Yeah, yeah. So that's okay. fine. So right, Jeff, well, uh, what about you? I guess I'll go. Uh, my first one is going to be Mass Effect. Uh, Good one. Let's yeah, just go one, one, two, or three. Anyone. You, you had to choose, or choose not to romance. Mm-hmm. That was hard. For you? Um, that was hard. That was a hard decision. <laughs> really? Everybody was. There were some hotties. You know what I mean? There was. Uh, <laughs> uh, what was her name? Uh, ah, it's on the top of my head. The brunette. Oh uh, my goodness. She worked for exactly Cerberus. What are you talking about? Oh, yep. um, Miranda. Miranda. Then there or, was. She was supposed to be Liara. like a perfect genetically or whatever. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. There was oh Liara. Um, there yeah, was I think uh, I had a, a long running. There was with Liara. There was the uh, sorry just a car. Right. There oh, was, uh, yeah. uh, you can have a 
uh, relationship with Jax, Jack. Jax yeah. was a real sto- was a was a weird one. Um, that was like Jax a hookup, was, I think. Right? It was. <laughs> um, you had uh, in the second the, one. There's uh, the, that engineering dude. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, and then you had the crewmate, oh, the um, girl, the Vega lady, or something. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then the the redhead girl, the new yep, one. That's the red one. Mm-hmm. Oh, like she's then, like the secretary, right? Yeah. You Kinda, could even yeah. do. Um, Tyler. Tyler. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was topic. always weird, knowing that it oxygen was. like kills her. <laughs> so, I always I wind up doing Liara. I think I did Liara like twice, because you could finish it up in the Shadow Brokers DLC. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. So I always went with her. Tough choice. It was either her or I don't know how to think for Asari uh, and the uh, the Asari Justicar. Um, okay. I forgot her name. Um, but yeah, so that was I a difficult choice because there were so many choices, and, and each one kind of fit Shepard's personality in certain aspects. And because well, you, you got to spend time with everybody, Shepherd. especially right, when, you yeah. did, when you did a loyalty mission, so you kind of got close. So if you weren't careful and you got caught up in the conversation, you just kind of went with it. I have a <laughs> confession. The next, mm-hmm. Go ahead. In the second one, I tried to hook up with the doctor, the old lady. Mm. She was so funny to me. She I thought, not was that an option? Bad weedy. No, it wasn't. But I <laughs> tried. She's like, nah, nah, nah. no offense, you're not you know my saying? type. I was like, come on, sugar baba. No, sugar but she, mama. she'd be like flirting back. You know what I mean? But if, um, you, if you play a woman, um, they didn't let you romance Garrus in the first one, but you could romance him in the second one. Yeah, they started switching up a lot of who you could, yeah. who you couldn't. So I think when things got a little bit more thing. progressive, they kind of. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know, cause, cause my my shepherd was bi. I played a, a bi lady. <laughs> the bi lady, you would. Because I, um, I started with Liara game. in the first game, and then I the the secretary in the second game kind of took me by surprise because she was kind of annoying. Yeah, she's kind of like all up on you. Like it's like really yeah. easy for her to get to you. Yeah, and so yeah, right? I kind of accidentally romance yeah. her, and then Liara was like, "Oh, this is what you're doing now? <laughs> this is what's going on? Like, oh, no, 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 is that what it looks like? <laughs> <laughs> right? So I did Miranda the first time, and then I did Liara. Um, but my second one is going to be um, Dishonored Two. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh. there's a lot of decision making in that game too. Yes, a lot. <laughs> but the biggest overarching decision for me was you gonna kill people. If I'm killing everybody, yeah, because those are the people yep. I wanted to kill, and I'm Man, like, it's if so I, much easier if, I if you kill just them, stab everybody. yeah, if you just kill them, because you want to use those powers and different combinations yeah. to see how you can kill different people, and I'm like, uh... and it was so much harder to do with the, uh, the not because it was a chaotic finish, and then there was the non-chaotic finish. Obviously, mm-hmm. one was you know, oh, your rise to power was seeped in bodies and blood and that mm-hmm. type of stuff, and certain things happened, and certain things didn't happen. I don't want to spoil it. I know Casey did want to go back and play it, but there were certain people that I actually wanted to kill. Um, there's this one guy, and there's no spoiler because it doesn't really tell any story, but he, he was like a bad guy, but he could turn into rats. He could like break apart it and just turn into rats ah. and run away. And um, I, that's a good name for him. I came across <laughs> him in the alley with two bodyguards and, you know, uh, fighting him, and um, he just broke apart and just ran, ran away, got away too. Little rats and stuff, because they split up. Like, oh, okay. All right, cool. But anyway, so <laughs> All right, a cool. couple of this. De- cool. I'll see you later. Uh, so it was a couple of decisions because you had to choose in the story to kill people or not to kill them. Obviously, like I said, it depends on the ending you would get. Yeah, so I, I was like, it. okay, I'll go for the good ending to start out. But you also have a scale, so I could kill maybe like a few mm-hmm. and not kind of tip the scale. So those mm-hmm. had those exceptions where some people just had to die because in each game you have those people who. Are heretics where they don't be- they believe in witchcraft and that type of stuff and they're just out to kill anybody who doesn't believe in that blah 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 so that type of stuff um so that was a very good very difficult decision to have that power and not be able to use it to my advantage like as as much as i wanted to be to, to be like try to yes. try to be socially responsible yes like turning into somebody and then walking <clears throat> off a building almost yeah. like um being superman and not taking over the planet Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. But these people wow. deserve to die, and it's in a world where <laughs> wow, they, you know, don't give Jeff Superman powers. Let's, let's all <laughs> take note of that. <laughs> Superman Jeff is a villain. <laughs> no, no I'm, looking. <laughs> no, I'd be okay. I, I wouldn't take over the world. You know, I just stay neutral. I get okay. my own fortress of solitude. You know what I mean? Would you? I, I would. I would. I would. Um, third choice. Mm-hmm. It's actually going to be um, Shadow of War. 
Okay. Oh. Kind of a Mordor type situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had choosing what orcs to bring to, to brand and bring to your side and which ones to kill. Because there were some with some really unique abilities, and I'm like, do do I want to go through all the trouble? Because some of them were like to brand them. Some were like you had to like go through a lot. Okay. Because they yeah. had like resistance to this, resistance to that, infuriated by this, infuriated by that. So it's like infuriated when they take damage. So it's like really. <laughs> Every time I hit him, he gets angered and, and like gets more powerful. So it's like, I need him. I need to have. I gotta have him. So it's like, so how do you overcome that. something like that? Do you have to like kill him in his sleep you or something be, like that? You either have to um, hit him with a status effect. Yeah. Because even though you're you're hitting him, if you're hitting him with like poison, that's still gonna keep ticking away. It's ticking gonna be away, ticking away. Right. Yeah. So he'll still get enraged, but he's, that doesn't mean he's not gonna take that damage. But also means you don't have to put yourself. And harm as much. Some people who were immune to range attacks. So like they had this one really cool ability the Wraith had. You shoot them with a Wraith arrow, and you could teleport to where that arrow went yeah, I remember into that, that, that person. Yeah, yeah, and finish them off, and you can change it to the next person, into the next person. The new one had like a lot more abilities in this one. It was like really really cool. So yeah. it was like um, there were different ways around different things. But like if you came like this one machine dude I had, he was from Machine Tribe, and he was immune to uh, range attacks he was immune to uh beast i think he was like enraged by something like bulb flies or something um and he was weak to like something like i think it was ghouls hmm so he was good as long as i never you know sent any ghouls into him in the ghoul infested area he was good so fighting other orcs he was just like dominate I mean, he had this one hand he could just like the tactical shot off the hell and then he, yeah <laughs> that's cool. crazy yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah like a mechanical hand so it was pretty cool he was like really strong. So when I fought him, <laughs> what's the name of that game with the um the guys with the hands that extend? It's an old game. Um, they put him in Mortal Kombat in Marvel Kombat. vs. No, they put him in Marvel vs. Capcom. Oh, uh, Commando. Yes. Um, yeah, it was it like Commando. Jump Commando or well, something. Bionic, Bionic Commando. Bionic, Bionic Commando. Commando. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Oh. Oh yeah, with the grappling hook arm. Okay. With the grappling yeah. hand. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. <laughs> Side note, his latest game was like, yeah, but um, <laughs> yeah, and apparently his arm is his dead wife. <laughs> yes, made no sense. That's the that's what? The, no that's sense. the twist yes. of that game. Yep. <laughs> yep. What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> made no sense. But um, <laughs> that's that's my three. Um, I'm yeah. tripping off of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was weird. It was weird. She was like, you know, and I think she kind of planned it. Yeah, he he's the one who didn't know. I don't I don't know yeah. who else did. I think know. he found out at the end. He was using it because he kind he kind of woke up with the bionic arm and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I need to find out what happened to my wife. Oh, she's been with you the whole time, or some jazz like that. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I actually did have an uh, honorable mention for for this one. Um, if you guys okay. remember the original Xbox exclusive Advent Rising. Yeah. yeah. Was that like the? Uh, it was kind of like the Matrix, wasn't it? I mean, in a uh, way, man, I'm thinking about the wrong. Didn't he get like powers? Yeah, and your stuff it was sort of developed? a thing where like it was like it took place in the future and stuff. Yeah, and like some aliens come and basically kidnap and wipe out humanity and stuff, right? Uh -huh. But the choice that they make you make is in that first level. You're with your fiance and your brother, and who do you save? Yeah, you have to save either your fiance or your brother. Oh no! So in the beginning, because I. I I loved this freaking game. I played through it like multiple times. So I saw, yeah. I saw both stories and they're literally just um, mirror reflections of one another. So if you pick one, everything opposite happens than the other. <clears throat> but I picked my fiance because chivalry, you know. <laughs> okay. And then you leave behind a brother who gets, you know, presumably killed. But in actuality, the brother gets kidnapped by the aliens. And the, you find out later on... <clears throat> Oh, and by the way, the person, whoever you pick to save, they drown later on. So, like, they just oh. die anyway. So, no. later, they yeah. just drown a little bit later. But the reason the why... Come back salty? No, 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 they don't come back. The, whoever Oof. you save dies. But the person who you left behind does come That's back. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and the reason humanity is being extinguished is because apparently they had this latent ability to become, like, super powerful psychics. Yeah, so he unlocked it. Yeah, yep. and so he, some new alien race starts trying to save humans, and they teach him his ability. So you're fighting against the invaders with those new abilities. And the invaders yep. took your brother 
and we're forcibly unlocking your brother's abilities. So you fight your brother as like this all powerful evil entity at the end of the game. Yeah. I, it, it reminded me of the major just because of the stuff he could do with his powers. It was yeah, so fun. like he could slow down stuff. He could like create yeah. like energy shields, like energy yep. blasts. That it game was, was fun. really it, fun. It was. It was it planned was. as a trilogy for Xbox, and it was one of the main reasons why back then I was a Nintendo fanboy. I only ever played Nintendo games. It was one of the main reasons why I was like, you know what, GameCube's not cutting it right now. There aren't enough games on it. I need to go and get an Xbox to play Advent Rising. And then after the first game, the studio went under. Oh, that sucked. I think yeah. that actually there was like a PSP game, Advent something else, but up, mm. after that there was nothing else. Mm. Honorable mention of uh, Grand Theft Auto Four, when you had to choose to let your cousin die. Oh, at the end of that your, game, right? Yes. Yeah. Or your girlfriend. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Of course, I picked my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> For me, uh, he was a grown man. He can make his own decision. You would have that trouble was because of him. Half that trouble was because of him. And it was it was ha- it was partly the fact that it was the girlfriend because you could choose a couple of different girls to date in that game, but they mm-hmm. kind of have you. They have one girl who kind of sticks around with you. I just didn't like her that much. <laughs> so that's what that's what made it easier for me. Okay, but you also said you had a, a honorable mention, Blue. Yeah, um, Pokemon Silver or Gold. <laughs> I didn't know which one to choose. <laughs> They're come across that in November. Time. Sword or Shield? <laughs> no, I'm not. Yeah, I don't know which one of those I'm, I'm picking now. I'll, whichever one yeah, I, I guess know just shows one. up first because I, I don't I'm care enough. I'm getting it for sure. <laughs> if so I do I can, get it, it'll be So I can send KC to, to the Shadow World. Different game. But <laughs> Silver <laughs> and Gold was very difficult for me to choose because... Um, it, it, it lined up. I think when it released, it was around my brother and my birthdays, which is, is we're born within a month, like a year and a month with each other, or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, but yeah, his birthday's in September, mine's in October. My mom said, "Okay, I'm buying you guys the Pokemon games," and we're just like, "Holy crap!" Now we just got to decide who gets Who's which one. What? Yeah. My brother, for whatever reason, I think I want a coin toss or something, and it was my choice. So I'm sitting there sweating for like a week, y'all. Yeah, we I don't know how you feel know. about hard choices. I'm sitting there on Game Facts, you know, on my dial-up and stuff, just trying to figure out, like, which one's going to be better. Is it going to be Lugia or um, what was the other one? The, the Ho-Oh. Ho-Oh. Yeah, I didn't know which one was going to be. Oh, man. Eventually, I ended up choosing Silver. And then I think I, I reneged. Yeah. <laughs> It's the whole goal for my brother. Yeah, that's the worst. I, yeah, no, I was pretty bad back then. But I mean, um, once you both nope. finish the game, you could have traded you, them yeah, and you played just it. Traded yeah. different games, but I mean, the whole point was that you needed other people with the other version to trade Pokemon, right? Yeah. So I mean, you guys actually had the perfect scenario that you both had. If we one had a game link or the cable. other. <laughs> <laughs> Mama wasn't buying no link cable. Mama, no link cable. <laughs> yeah. So okay, that was my runner-up. Good stuff. So that's yeah. actually going to do it for the podcast today. I hope you guys hey. enjoyed. Um, Jeff, where can people find you if they're looking for you on the internet? So you can find me on Facebook at uh, Superman Jeff Place. And you can also find me on Mixer at Superman Jeff 12. Um, go ahead and hit that subscribe button at the bottom, as well as the likes. We definitely depend on those likes. And that bell is going to notify you when we post new content. So, yeah, go ahead and do that. Thank you. Yep, Blue, yep. where can people find you? It's your boy, Blue Bones, B L U B Zero N E S. Um, you already know. <laughs> Jeff, you be cracked me up. Uh, <clears throat> Mixer, B L U B Zero N E S X B as an Xbox. That's my primary console, not my only one. Um, look out for a feature from Level Up. They're going to be talking about their game, their streamer of the month. Spoiler alert, <clears throat> me. So. <laughs> <laughs> Look out for that. It's going to be super cool. Um, yeah, that's run by good friend Ashley Diaz. Team over there, yeah. Big ups to the Level Up team. Um, and then you can find me on Facebook. Play with Blue Bones, B-L-U-B-0-N-E-S once again. Uh, I think that's basically it for me. Okay. Right now. But Sigma, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on all social media as Sigma Gears 9 S-I-G-M-A-G-E-A-R-S-9. Uh, you can also find me on uh, Facebook at Sigma and Sun. Uh, just search for that. We should come up. I don't think anybody else is using that tagline. <laughs> um, but like Jeff said, also hit the YouTube. B 
BBET yeah. Gaming to search it out. That's right. The more people who subscribe there, the easier that URL will get. Because <laughs> as of right now, you got to search for us. Yeah, mm-hmm. man. But if we hit 100 subscribers, we'll be able to just tell you YouTube.com slash BBET Gaming. But we don't now have we know y'all got yet. like. We know y'all got like two emails for one for your good stuff and one for your bad stuff. Yeah, just your subscribe on both. Just hook your brother you know up. on both. Leave right. him good and bad. You know Do what I mean? <laughs> and also, my Code Vein review just went live yesterday or the day before yesterday. I forget. It was like two days ago. Yeah, like yeah. two days ago. Um, hit the Escapist YouTube channel and check out the three minute reviews. That one is Definitely actually something that my boss is calling three minute review plus because it's slightly longer. He's giving me the opportunity to give a little bit more insight on certain bigger games. So uh, definitely check that out and voice how much you love the longer reviews because maybe that can turn into something else entirely for your boy. So I definitely appreciate the, uh, the support. Uh, definitely want to thank everybody who's been listening. Also want to thank hey. both co-hosts, Jeff and Blue. That's going to do it for episode 18 of the BBE That's Gamescast. Right. <laughs> Peace. Deuces, yo. Niggas really tripping. What if they always got the hate? Concentrate on a nigga while I'm high trying to get him and forget it. Shaking my head, these niggas that don't see. Trying to get bread, your niggas in deep sleep. At least I'm woke, and I'm a beast. At least I know. Whoa. Try to get rid-